Hey everybody, I'm just getting ready with the guys here, so give me uh, a second, and I will introduce everything going on. Screen. Oh, it's so All bad. All right, so uh, one thing I did want to check, I think if I can help, you know, either get somebody's help, or maybe I can do it myself. I wanted to check, my volume was very loud for this stream last time, 
compared comparatively to the Discord uh, uh, audio, and I wanted to get a better balance for that stuff. So I'm going to see if I can pull up my stream and, and kind of uh, tweak that in a little bit. But um, hey, guys, welcome back. Uh, this is episode two of our mini uh, <coughs> five fifth edition five eighth. Uh, I was about to say, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Um, <laughs> this is our. Uh, that's my daughter in the background. My bad. Uh, but this is our um, second episode, uh, kind of a session one one point redo, uh, if you will. Uh, and uh, we're going to get back into the campaign here where uh, last session, the, the first episode, was kind of an introduction to the Roll20 system as we were kind of learning some kinks in the system um, and as well as uh, some of us kind of getting used to 5e because uh, we really, uh, a bunch of us uh, maybe hadn't played with it uh, a little bit. So um, we're having some fun. So we have Dan, the GM here, uh, Kurt, who is playing a character named Davros, uh, a half-elf, I believe, uh, rogue. Um, and then Bill, uh, who is playing Verk, a half-orc, right, Bill? Correct. Half-orc uh, barbarian. Um, and then I myself am Fratzcat, your uh, local favorite uh, Twitch streamer um, and Fortnite uh, person that dies. And uh, I will play... <laughs> I, I am playing uh, Jonas, uh, who is also a half-elf uh, of royal noble blood, uh, although he's a terrible person. Um, and uh, and we uh, had a really good uh, f you know first session, really enjoyed ourselves. I think uh, we, we debriefed kind of offline, and, and uh, we're having a lot of fun with, with uh, what we have set up here. So we wanted to, you know, we wanted to continue it and, and, and enjoy the fun. Dan uh, is on <clears throat> a mixture of... Uh, Vicodin and NyQuil to uh, try to knock out a cold here. Uh, so we're expecting some pretty trippy uh, narrative decisions uh, as he oh, yeah. uh, as it's he describes worlds. <laughs> You're already dead. <clears throat> All these I searched for noble noblemen. Spoiler alert, I guess. And uh, for the asset, and it's all like strippers. The the roll twenty assets are so bad, guys. Like, like, like tavern dancer, like ladies of the night, like it's it's astonishing. Uh, well, that's uh, that that's one way to. We can we can make it that kind of campaign. I mean, why you? Why, hey, listen. I didn't put in noble men. Like, I want a, a male, and it's all like busty tavern wenches. Uh, well, I suppose in, uh, in 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 instead of a gentleman's club, it could be a noble a nobleman's club. Yeah, that's that might be what they called it back. Who 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 knows? Uh, who could tell? Although I imagine they weren't like super big on you ah, guys. I might not be able to use tokens. Well, so how far is it going to throw you out if I just do random tokens? Like, hey, there's a goblin. Pretend it's not a goblin. Like, cause I'm trying to find like, you know, you know what I mean, like accurately representative. Don't they have like, don't they? Wouldn't they have just like standard like space like shape tokens like a hexagon, a, a uh, triangle? You know what? A... That's probably true. Like why? Yeah, why wouldn't uh, you just do that rather than be like, hey, there's a goblin. He's a he's a he's a thing. Uh, I again, roll twenty is I I really I hate it a lot, but I don't see anything. If you guys want to, if you guys can. Oh no, you guys don't have the ability to do that, do you? Um, I'm sorry, I need two seconds. I got Skyler screaming back. Nice. <laughs> no, uh... Fratz, you're you're not wrong. Um, you you'd actually that, or just like a tokens pack. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Like a standard three. like hexagon, triangle, square. I, I I'm not seeing it. Um, that's that's weird. It won't throw me off. To answer the question. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean I'm fine with it. Yeah. Okay. Um what's up I'm, with the I might just Yeah, this is this is weird, Bill. You did mention um that you're having trouble pulling up my stream. I refreshed the stream and I'm able to pull up the stream, but uh it's only giving me credit for one viewer, which is sad. Um but I'm not sure if that's true or not, so I see you fine. Uh... Mucklock What? <laughs> Oh man, what's up, man? Welcome to session one point one. Oh, Mucklock here. Check this out, man. What? Look at this. Look at this lighting difference, right? No light. That tiny little twenty dollar light that I showed you, man. Look at this. 
you, you know, like it's you, it's worth the 20 or like $23 or whatever investment. Um, I'm not even using the other attachment any for, anymore for the webcam. The webcam is just on my monitor, but uh, it's uh, uh, a pretty uh, worthwhile. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, nice. You do open Notepad and your whole screen goes white and you're perfectly happy with it. Yeah. Um, how's the sound uh, quality, by the way, in terms of my voice and stuff? Am I cutting in and out or anything, Muck? And and or if Dan could talk a little bit, um, is Dan is Dan's voice uh, at appropriate level? Test test one two three. My name is Dan. I'm the DM. You both sound clear. Awesome. Yeah, the the first episode, the first session, or what have you. Um, I was just getting done tweaking voice meter. Um, voice meter is like a a virtual. Uh, uh, not amp, but what what are those like sound boards that you plug a whole bunch of inputs in and then mix them together? Uh, mixer, I guess. Uh, it's like a virtual mixer. Um, I, my personal volume was a little bit high for the video, and like so, people watching the stream, people watching the video on demand. I was just a little bit too loud, I thought, compared to the guys on Discord. So, um, but I think this is this is awesome. But th uh, thanks, I, thanks, for, thanks for stopping by, go. man. <clears throat> um, Sorry, cool, cool, cool. Uh, awesome. So Bill's back. Kurt, you there? <coughs> yeah, I'm here. Yeah, of course you are. So, all right. Um, who who is, would Dan would Dan would you like to do this um this recap yeah, I'll, I'll and I'll then recap. and then maybe next time we'll know what the recap should be like and then maybe somebody else yeah, does it I next mean, time. Yeah, it's just it's just an overview of of the the salient points of last session. So last session, um, we begin with three criminals in a prison called uh, Fairweather One. Um, and uh, they were in for a variety of crimes. Uh, Jonas, uh, uh, our, our local bard, was in there for the murder, or I guess causing the suicide of 73 innocent townsfolk in his quest to attain godhood, which, spoilers, didn't work. Uh, Verk, uh, the pit fighter, was arrested for uh, a single count of murder. Um, and uh, Davros, the thief of the Irons, uh, yeah, yeah, thief of the Iron Scythe gang, was arrested for the attempted uh, grand theft of an orb from a goddess's temple, the orb of quiet goddess of the untouched. <clears throat> um, all three of them were in this maximum security prison, from which uh, there are only really two exits. Uh, either you are executed uh, in due time or you are bribed out. Um, all three of these uh, prisoners were interrogated about their crimes by three different people. Um, uh, Jonas was interrogated by um, a young mystic named Brightholm, uh, who seemed to know an awful lot about uh, ascension roots to divinity, but didn't divulge much of why he was questioning Jonas. Um, uh, Verk was questioned by uh, one of the wardens of the prison, um, and... Uh, the prison warden seemed increasingly afraid of him the more he questioned Verk, as if he knew something about Verk that Verk didn't know. And Davros was questioned by a um, a young scholar uh, who uh, looked asked questions almost as if she was gathering data for a census. It was very sort of clinical. Uh, and Davros, I believe, uh, the other two uh, uh, prisoners responded truthfully and arrogantly, and you denied all all culpability, as I recall. What interview? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, when they were back at their cells later that day after the interviews, um, the prison was rocked by an explosion, and uh, the prisoners looked out to see that the prison was being completely destroyed, as if by hailfire, meteor storm. And they crawled their way out of the wreckage of their cells, and lo and behold, the world was on fire. It was as if the apocalypse had come at last. Um, Beasts rising from the ground, descending from the air, uh, moon uh, blackened by smoke, the seas turned to blood, um, an absolute and total ravaging of this city and, from their perspective, the world. Um, they tried to find some exit away from this town uh, and away from the paths of these uh, uh, terrible demon beasts. Uh, and on their way out of this ruined hellscape, they found uh, a lonely soldier, uh, a man who, golden-haired, paladin-esque uh, in every sense of the, the stereotype, uh, fighting off these beasts single-handedly. Uh, they attempted to give this man some aid, as he seemed more or less, if not on their side, at least not 
a, a hell beast, so you know, uh, someone worthy of their uh, of their assistance, and they they fought the beast, and together, mostly due to this paladin's help, they defeated it. This paladin pulled around for around his neck a device looking looking for all intents and purposes like a a very clunky brass compass, and told them that they would to fear not because they are about to go to a better world than this. At which point he was promptly uh, uh, killed. A colossal sized hand rose up out of the ground pierced his chest with a single thumb claw and drove him back down into the ground where he was hurt from no more the device falling clattering at the feet of jonas and um davros um jonas went for it davros was quicker he grabbed the device and the device spoke to him in a language he did not understand but at the more it spoke to him the more he seemed to his brain seemed to intuit what it was trying to say as if it was rewiring accordingly or if the device was uh, altering itself accordingly perhaps meeting somewhere in the middle uh, and it offered it mentioned that the coordinates were locked and navigation was found and it offered them a choice of three worlds to travel to um, the world choices were give me one second I believe it was worms broken marble and songs and Davros inexplicably to everyone including the gm chose world of worms um which going by just words in the english language i, I certainly wouldn't have done but um they found themselves in this ruined manor which should be up on the screen now frats i believe uh is that is that up on on discord or on twitch he has stepped away what was the question I didn't. Okay. Hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I, I wanted to know if the screen was up. If the world the of screen worms. Is up, yeah, yes. the world of worms is up with. Okay. Okay. I do, we have the label on the characters now, which I didn't have before. That's weird so, because that was always there. And I was. Uh, I only have the label on my character. I, I have it on me. Seeing that. Oh, is that the? Maybe it's the. Maybe it's, the, maybe it's the journal. Characters in his journal. Yeah, maybe it's the journal access. So maybe but, give them the view of journal, not the edit, but maybe the view. You can take edit away from me, by the way, since I'm not going to use that thing. Um, let, let's we can test that right now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I bet you they need to know who the character is to be able to see the, the to know the token. You know what I mean? It makes sense. Oh, so let me take off. All right. So Davros's token no longer has edited by you. That's fine. Yep. Uh, um, Frats, can you still see his nameplate? I. Oh no, I don't. So you need edit privileges in order to see the nameplate. That's dumb. That's really dumb, because when I have a room full of NPCs, it'd be really helpful if you could just know who they are at a glance. Um, that's very silly. Um, we'll leave it alone for now. Uh, <clears throat> excuse my coughing over the course Give of Give me this. like two seconds. Um, I'll be right back. Okay. We can probably continue with the... That's, I suppose that's fair. So in the world of worms, things are terrible. They found themselves in a ruined manor, uh, long taken over by uh, the forces of the Earth, which, it bears mentioning, uh, is less real uh, soil and grass and more uh, bits of rotted flesh and wriggly worms. The trees themselves are made of some kind of sick flesh. The leaves uh, are look like pieces of very thinly sliced skin it's all in all a, a pretty terrible place to be um and they searched for over the course of a the, the it was revealed to them they had searched for maybe a day didn't find anything but this ruined manor and it set themselves in for the long haul to wait until this compass would hopefully wake up and find them a way out they searched the manor for a little bit we didn't get too far into it very i wanted to kind of just really skip through and get to like a, an encounter so we would get to play out the rules and see what everybody you know how everybody felt um and they uh the compass woke up um while uh jonas was examining some books and learning that they were not the first travelers to arrive here there was travelers before them talking about how they've arrived um instantaneously at this location they're all going to die in this place is terrible it's a uh, monstrous world uh and while he was looking to see if he could find more details about this world what got this way was it always this way uh, uh, the compass began to speak to Davros and tell him that it was it had acquired or nearly acquired a location lock on them, and it had to uh, find an anchor point. So they went on the map, played a little hot and cold, found that the a nearby well, which you can probably see on the screen right now, is where 
uh, the anchor point was for this world. So Davros stood very stock still and waited for the compass to lock into the location and then presumably, if it acted now as it did before, to take them to another place, uh, also hopefully a better one than this. During this time, uh, Verk was seduced by a siren song. Uh, a young lady had fallen down this well and began to ask him if he would come down there or perhaps toss her a, a blanket. Um, and upon so doing, he encountered that there was no woman down the well, but in fact a uh, very terrible, long, wriggly tube worm with rows of teeth masquerading as a well, um, a well mimic, if you will, um, and grabbed him by the foot and began to pull him back in. Jonas and Davros all leapt into action, and through some uh, quick thinking and some teamwork, they were able to drive Jonas's sword through this creature who called herself Brianna, presumably the the uh, nom de plume of the, uh, the, the supposed woman that was trapped down there. Uh, and uh, they pinned it to the ground, uh, wriggled Verk free, and then the worm, uh, upon, they, upon them pulling the sword out, um, flew back into the ground, and they could feel beneath their feet this worm sort of flailing and, and thrashing down there. At which time, the compass alerted them that they was right about ready to transfer. At the very moment the compass had locked onto them by the way, they heard voices coming from the forest. Um, within a few seconds, they found that there was a squad of men covered in bright lights and, and uh, on, their, on their heads and uh, clothed in, in dark armor. Uh, coming towards them with these objects. This is something that I, I kind of don't know how to do um, in character. Like, they have guns. That's obviously what they're carrying. I don't know if I want to do the, like, you guys see a boomstick. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know in terms of tone what the best way to do it is. I think it's easy for everybody if I just describe them as they're holding guns. Your characters don't know what guns are yet. I imagine they will soon. And does that, like you know, uh, totally break immersion for anybody if I just call them you, like they have they have night vision goggles as well, obviously. Like how you did it last time was fine. Some sort of device that yeah, like I, I forget how you described it, but you described it and Me I too. knew it was out I knew it was a gun. Yeah. But yeah. So uh <clears throat> yeah that that's perfectly fine. M Muckluck in chat <clears throat> says every time Frats goes AFK, Dan sighs like he's being bullied again. <laughs> <laughs> it's my sigh of like I'm a DM and I can do nothing about this thing that I don't want to happen. Uh, it's a sigh that I'll do a lot. Uh, um, yeah. So anyway, these 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 troopers come in and they. Uh, I actually I'm trying to remember if they said anything to you. I don't Not think they did. I to us, but we heard them saying, you know, like like we found them, and then I'm pretty sure it was just open fire, uh, and that was that was the end of the session. There were two gunshots and then fade to black. Okay, fantastic. Oh, fade to white. Fade white. to white. Yes, that's right. All right. Um, <clears throat> so um, let me get into the chat log here. Okay. So let's start off with uh, the outcome of these two gunshots. Uh, <clears throat> I am going to... Uh, sorry, bear with me one second. <coughs> I'll be right back. Muckluck, can we fade to clear? There's no reason to bring color into this. <laughs> I told you you would have had fun in this campaign. I know the scheduling thing didn't make sense. And uh, perhaps we can we can reassess next time, Muck. But uh, I thoroughly enjoy your streams. I hope. Uh, for the little bit before you get started tonight, that uh, that you get you get a chance to see what we're up to, and uh, that it's a, a little bit of fun for you. All right. Uh, so the two soldiers fire. Um, one of them, uh, and I'm not going to actually. No, I'll, I'll, you know what? I will. I will roll. No. I'm gonna roll uh, against. I wish th uh, there might be a formula to roll against a character and have it load up their AC. That would be kind of cool. I don't know if that exists here, but uh, I'm going to roll uh, at you, Davros, who's holding the compass. What is your armor class? Higher than a nine. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Um, 14. All right. Um, it looks as if 
you hear the shot and nothing immediately happens. You hear the, you, you think, if pressed a day later for questioning to recount the events that happened here, you would be certain that what you heard was the uh, bullet ricochet off the statue behind you. And yet you are equally sure that you've just been hit. Uh, right in the shoulder. Uh, I'm going to roll damage here. Oops. A seven. Um, <coughs> I, I Rolling pretty great other than that nine. Um, right in the shoulder, and it goes directly to your wounds. A thing we're going to talk about in a second. Um, it pierces your armor like nothing you've ever been hit with goes right into your flesh and you are just about knocked off your feet in fact i'd like you to roll me a strength uh save oh great <laughs> you are in fact knocked off your feet uh this is actually where it gets tricky i'd like you now to roll me a uh, dexterity to see if you keep your hands on that uh that compass um, yeah, you got that, it. You have yeah, a clutch in your hand. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say that the force, the compass flies out of your hand, but you immediately catch it in midair as you're falling. So tight is your focus on the device. Um, you grab it, you clutch it to your chest, much like a a, a um, football player catching the ball and diving, covering their covering it with their body. Um, and the second shot goes against you, Jonas. Word. Jonas is ready. Beautiful hit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, actually, that's a that's a crit. Um, uh, hey, anyone know how uh, crit confirms work in Five uh, E? It's a uh, second damage dice usually. Huh? Is that what you're talking about? No. How do you confirm? Oh, crit do not have to be confirmed. Oh, okay, that's cool. It's just if you roll a twenty or, yeah. or in the crit range oh. of whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's just um, it. Yep. So, uh, no, so there are no crit ranges in 5e. It's one of the things that I um, house rule. Um, so, it is a crit that I don't have to. Oh, confirm. God. Muck luck, you son of a bitch. It is for this. Mm. Uh, 7, 14 damage, Merc. 14 damage to your wounds. It blows a hole in your chest. Uh, <laughs> you uh, roll me also a strength uh, save, please. Hold on. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not Merc. Uh, Jonas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I don't want to uh so you said this is directly to uh wounds, right? Yeah, I'm going to do that in a second. Uh, it's one of the things that I wanted to do last session and forgot about. No, that's fine, but you said it was 12? No. Uh four, 14. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm um, What's your con? Uh it's not great. <laughs> it's an 8. <laughs> All right. 16. So wow, mm -hmm. that's yeah. two mm -hmm. wounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, and what what save did you want? I'm sorry. Uh, strength, please. Strength to save. Yeah. You actually make it. You you're able to stay standing. Uh, you're just stunned. You're like looking down at the the, the wound the in blood my chest. Just, yeah. Gosh, yeah. You're you're you you almost don't even feel the pain yet. You 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 don't you can't even process what's just happened to you. Nothing in your life has ever hit you like this, uh, and possibly ever. Could. At that exact moment that you hear the, the, the compass, you feel it. You guys can't see it, but uh, Zavros, you feel it warm to the touch, to almost burning hot, and it says, prepare for transport. It only says it to you. You're the only one that can really understand it, but you hear the man uh, down the path that looks like the squad leader says, shit, and then <laughs> fade to white. Um, you, you find yourself now. Let's uh, go ahead and see. How do I transport you guys to a new map? How do I make this map? This is going to be the um, the world of heels, right? The world of heels. Well, it's world of constellations. That's the world that uh, your uh, Davros uh, world up. world of hospitals. Um, yeah. To, to fix our wounds. <laughs> how, world, how do you? The world of cure major wounds. Do I just put you guys on I don't, there? I don't know. Yeah. I think you do. Uh, all I see, I zoomed all the way out. I just still just have the one map, I guess. Oh, weird. Oh, no. No, it'd be a separate map. 
Oh, okay. It is, it's a separate map. I don't know how to like put you on it. This is so weird. Well, Are you I mean, able to just load that map? I, I on my screen it's loaded. Like, hmm. I, I don't. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I just pasted name Davros controlled by Davros. So, Kurt, can you see that you're on a? Let me delete you off of. I still only see that the map that we were just at. Is it supposed to be a different map, or is it supposed to be a different area on that same canvas you have? It's a it's a different map. No, but you get what I'm saying on roll twenty, right? Yes, it's a different map. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I genuinely don't. This is the episode where Dan invites us to a new game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Look, I might even like delete. Please move your players to a different page. Cool. How? Hmm. Edit? You're always bringing moms into this, aren't you, McCluck? Mm -mm -mm. Alright, I just... Can someone Google this for me while I'm trying to figure this I'm out? Look, I'm, looking I'm, I'm looking through their help stuff right now. God, I, I, I can't stand it. If this is the best thing on the internet, this is astonishing. It, this is the best free ish. I'll, I'll pay. I'll fucking pay for something better than this. Well, all the pay ones are like sixty bucks. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> Like before, you guys didn't have to pick a page because there was only the one, so like it didn't. Control Shift M, switch the maps layer and move any selected objects to that layer. But it's a different map. It's not a different layer on the same map. Mm. What did I just do? Control Shift M does something super weird. Well, that's probably like a. It's a Firefox oh, shortcut. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> That is not a good thing to do. It's like a manual rescale, which is pretty neat, but uh, looks messed up. But there's then there's no option to, to change layers. No, um, that, that's going to be a GM thing. The players will see whichever page you, you place the player bookmark on. The player bookmark is the red ribbon with the word players on it. You can click and drag to move it between pages. God That's damn it. Yep. Okay. Oh, hey! Oh, boy, I hate that. <sighs> oh, look at that. Uh, yep. The beautiful looking... I don't know what you were complaining about. This is great. Uh, Well, yeah, it didn't look like this uh, half an hour ago. Or an hour ago. Um, <laughs> no, it, it was completely blank. I guess I'll pull up Twitch just to see, so I can. We have see, it open. we see the whole thing now. Yeah, okay. we we see. I mean, we have no fog of war, but I I did not have the time. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And plus, that was kind of wonky to begin with. Anyway, I, so I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> in a stunning twist, you arrive at a new world and the exact same location. Um. um oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> This is what I meant by uh, it's not going to take a lot of work to make new maps every session, but uh, uh, so <laughs> there's, the, there's, the, there's the fucking frat's face. Um, so you land in this beautiful idyllic space. <coughs> if they land, you you are just immediately there. Um, 
The grass is soft. The sun is warm. There's a light breeze. You're still bleeding out all over the ground. Let's talk a little bit about wounds and vigor. Um, yes, so here's the way that I like to do damage in D&D. &D. Um, I don't like hit points. I think they're really weird. And even though D&D &D isn't super uh, simulationist, it feels too far from simulation for my liking. Um, I don't like that a character um, can just take hit point damage all day. Uh, and I, what I really don't like is that uh, a level one rogue would, uh, if a level one rogue sneaks up on a level 20 fighter, the best they can do is sneak attack damage. And that would be, you know, how, however many 1d6 plus 1d4 for the dagger, right? Um, level 20 fighter doesn't know the rogue's there. By being level 20, he shouldn't have, like, better organs, right? He, he's not, like, harder to kill in terms of, like, his flesh is harder. He's simply more combat experienced. <clears throat> um, wounds and Vigor reflects that. Your wounds score is your actual hit points. That's That's what it takes to kill you. That number is always double your con. So Jonas has a con of 8, so his wounds is 16. Uh, on these 5e character sheets, there's no spot for it. I would put that number in your temporary hit points. So your temporary hit points box will now be your wounds box. That number only changes if you get more con, which is not going to happen very often. The number that is your hit points uh, is now called Vigor. Vigor is basically stamina. It's the thing that goes down as you take scratches here and there and tumble around, and it reflects you being worn out by the fight. Um, your vigor is equal to your maximum hit die times your level. So if Davros, what's your hit die uh, in 5e? Is it a 6 or an 8? Eight? 8. So And you're level 3, so it's 24. Your vigor is 24. Your wounds are, what's your con? Uh, 10, so 20. So 20. So you have 20 minus wounds, seven. 24 vigor. Minus 7, yeah, thank you. Uh, Jonas, you have 16 minus 14, uh, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. however much vigor. Uh, and uh, 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 Bill, does that make sense? That calculation? Yes. Uh, three times max hit die. Yeah. And sure. yep. double con. Yep. <laughs> so the vigor is going to fluctuate like you would normally for hit points. It's going to go up and down. You're going to you know gain and lose. Um, and um, as you level up, you're going to gain you know six eight. I think you're probably a D10. I, I think or no, aren't you a D12? I'm, I'm a D12. Yes, yeah, so you're going to gain twelve uh, every level, and your so, wounds are only ever going to go up if you choose to allocate a stat point to con. Yeah. So that goes up with the number of hit dice that we have, correct? Yeah. Yep. It's just so your number you, of hit you dice said which times is level. Yeah, so you just said times three because we are at level three. Correct, correct. It'll, okay, be, cool. it'll, it'll be times four next level and times five level after. Gotcha. Um, and uh, <clears throat> you're, the way that this works is, by and large, most of the time, you're going to take damage to Vigor first. When Vigor's gone, you start taking damage to wounds. There are a couple exceptions. Certain abilities, like negative damage and other things that I like to play with as a GM, I will say this goes right to wounds. Like gunshots. Like gunshots. So your players now know whatever these devices are, don't fuck with them, because they can almost like actually. If I had rolled one higher, I would have uh, one shot Jonas. Yeah. Or put him at zero, which would have put him in range where he has to roll a, a fortitude save to, to stay alive. Um, <clears throat> these things will fuck you up, unless perhaps you were to find some kind of armor that might protect against these strange devices. What? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, critical hits also do damage to wounds equal to the number of die you are rolling. Uh, so, for instance, if I'm rolling a, a, a 1d6 weapon and I crit, so basically it's 2d6, the number of die goes to wounds, right? So two. So you take two wound damage in addition to the actual damage you would take to your vigor. Does that make sense? How does that work with sneak attack? Sneak attack is exactly the same. Glad you asked. It's the same thing. The number of dice you're rolling go to wounds. So rogues are pretty lethal if they're getting their sneak attack off. It's going right into wounds. So if they're rolling five sneak attack dice, five that's five damage to wounds. Got it. Um, so crits, sneak attacks, things like things that would make sense basically, like negative energy, things that hit your con directly, stuff like that goes to wounds. Um, Vigor comes back at the end of like maybe a ten minute rest, uh, so pretty quickly. <laughs> basically, whenever you're out of danger and have like ten minutes to breathe. Your vigor's back. Wounds comes back at one per day, two per day if you get substantial first aid. 
Um, wounds also, in terms of healing spells, if you have any, you heal, uh, your vigor heals by, you know, however much you roll on the, the die. Not that you'll use it out of combat, because you're going to gain your vigor back out of combat pretty quickly. Um, and it heals wounds equal to the number of die you roll against. Same thing as, as if you were to take damage to it. So if Rats rolls a 1d8 plus 3 cure on you, that's one point of wounds, and however many points of vigor that would get back. Does that make sense? So what you're saying is, Rats needs to take one level in Rogue so he can sneak attack heal us. Exactly. That's yes. exactly yeah. what I said. It's perfect. <clears throat> Actually, before um, we left the last world, I uh, snuck that uh, dagger of uh, super healing. <clears throat> yeah, man, I forgot that I put that in the world. It's weird. After after, after my whole thing about magic items. Um, so that's Wounds and Vigor. Um, and I wanted to introduce that uh, by shooting you. Uh, so you'll learn that it's really bad to lose wounds and that guns are really good at that. Yeah. So, Dan, I already knew about the system. So can we oh, yeah? just uh, the, oh. the the gunshot for Jonas toss, not not toss be that over to Verk, maybe? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, and then also uh, I'll explain um, uh, uh, fate. And actually, no, I'll do fate in, uh, in uh, a little bit. I'll do it when it becomes appropriate. Um, so is everyone good on wounds and vigor? Yep. yep. Cool. So don't take damage. Uh, it also um, makes a system wherein you don't really just want to get in fights all the time, unless you need to. Because if you take a wound damage during that fight, that's a day. Like, that's one whole day you now have to wait to, to be comfortable with it. So that sucks a lot. Um, so be judicious when you fight. And right for right now, for the time being, Jonas is going to be in the back line. Anyway, Jonas, you're lying on the ground. Um, uh, you're, you're flailing and bleeding, and you might be screaming. It's up to you. Uh, what do you guys do? I am, uh, I mean, I'm in obvious excruciating pain. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I am uh, wincing through it. <clears throat> what the fuck? <laughs> well, since I see Davros on the ground, I'm going to see what I can do to help him. Um, <laughs> Is first aid still a skill? I have no fucking idea. I don't know what the skills are in this game. Oh, um, this happened last time, too. I need to pull up a list of uh, 5e skills <sighs> so I can tell you guys what to Medicine. Mean. Medicine, yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have medicine? I'm grasping at Davros's ankles. I I don't have medicine, <laughs> but I can still do a, a non-proficient attempt to get him to stop bleeding. Or That's true. Um, <laughs> so... If you're just trying to staunch the bleeding, I'll, I'll make it a DC 10. Um, let's see here. Uh, do I need to find something to use as a bandage? or? Yeah, you're going to have to like... either rip off some cloth, or there's nothing around you. Right, it is I'll, empty. It's a beautiful... I'll just, uh... I'll just take a piece of my prison uniform and uh -huh. rip it off and use it as a makeshift bandage. Okay. Oh, uh, what? what oh. What was that? Uh, the, the the thing that the worm? Uh, no. Hold still. I'm grasping at Davros's ankles, and I'm like, "You took us! Oh, you took us! Is, is that an is that a nat no, twenty? No, it'll be that green. That is not a nat twenty. Oh. Yeah, correct. Um. Okay. So, uh, you, uh, you've probably done. You know what? You've had to patch up a few fighters in the pit. And yourself, actually. So this that explains your that that role. Um, uh, so Jonas, if you rest and don't do anything too terrible right now, uh, also the bleeding has stopped. So when you're below ten wounds, um, or sorry, below half wounds, any action you take results in you taking another point of wound damage unless you successfully pass a um, a Constitution save. Um, he no longer has to make a save because the, the bleeding has been stopped. He is stable at two wounds. Um, you're able to get up. But it probably hurts like a son of a bitch, uh, Jonas. No, uh, I, I, I flail around. Um, I end up flopping onto my belly, and I'm, I look like a pauper, like clawing my way up Davros, and I'm like, oh, dear God, get, get off of me, please! Uh, no. All right, Jonas. There are a lot of worms. I'll, I'll help you next. <laughs> Dan, Burke helped uh, Davros first, not Jonas. Oh. oh, okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, then, then, so the Davros, you have the first aid applied. So, so oh. now roll for Jonas. Can I assist was, him? 
Uh, sure. I, don't, I, I don't see why not. Assist me now. Yeah, I think he can assist you. I will do it, a... Is that the same as it is in uh, what I'm used it's, to? Plus, plus two? It's a advantage. Advantage, okay. I wish there was a way to just tell it that I only want to do it for this one, but... <laughs> there it is. Perfect. So, same result. You're able to patch him up pretty well. Um, and uh, Jonas, you are also now stable. So Davros and Jonas, you are both not losing. Although you weren't going to lose any more, but Davros, now you're going to gain two hit points over the course of the night because okay. you've had this applied. Um, what, you weren't at half wounds, were you? No. That puts you out. Okay. Uh, Jonas, you are not making any attempt to be quiet, right? You're screaming just at yeah. the top mm -hmm. of your lungs. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like, like trying, trying to be manly. As yeah, okay. as manly as one can do on their deathbed, right? So kind of like a uh, whimpering under your breath. The, well, well, were you guys not hearing me earlier? I was trying to yeah, scream. Right. Yeah, I was trying to scream at Kurt. Why is it that I imagine Jonas with a very high pitched voice? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait! I know, I know, I can do this. I can do this. Hold on. Hold on, wait. Crowd of worms. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I I I made the whole map GM layer. Um. Oh, now oh, we're I I I, I I died. I on <laughs> Jonas is dead. Fade to white. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say fade to white. <laughs> and the undo button isn't doing anything. Uh oh my god. I, Dan, I'm not sure how, but your un your undo button has untyped stuff in my Microsoft Word document here. Th this is a crazy system. Uh, that's the GM undo button for you. <laughs> Ho holy shit! Like this is like the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I right clicked a token and then I, I guess I clicked too far to the right of him to make that token um Okay. Is yeah, we're back. Again. Okay. God damn it. Guys, I'm back in the world of worms. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about your luck. <laughs> All right. A man. You guys see this guy? Thank you. God damn it. Comes running out of the building. Um, by the way, the architecture and design here is like early, or I would say late Victorian. Um, so more than you guys are used to, um, the the hyper-realistic uh, statues and finely chiseled marble. The house is all this beautiful paneled wood and stone. Um, the windows are all um, perfectly clear glass. Something you also might not be used to. Uh, and this man coming out is clothed in um, uh, trousers, uh, well-made but uh, stained, um, a uh, long white shirt cuffed up to his elbows, and a thick apron covered with a variety of foods and sauces. Um, he is uh, very cleanly groomed. Um, he is bald with a thick mustache. Um, and he is uh, holding a, um, a double-barreled shotgun. <clears throat> and uh, he, uh, you can see faces peering out from the windows of the house as well. And he looks at you and says, Halt! Who are you? Speak! He's got, uh, he's got one of them really boom boom sticks. Take a slight step back and to the left behind the statue. Okay. Which you can do, right? You can click the guy and move him. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, do you actually try to stealth? Is that a, a stealth check? Yes. All right. Well, let's see if the guy even sees you. He might not even... Because you were behind Vark, and Vark is large. We're, but, I mean, on a, on a, under, on a sub note, we're not, we're not leaving Vark to all of the charisma-based stuff here, right? 
<laughs> well, Mr. Charisma, you're out front. Uh, I, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll talk to this guy. Kurt, that's my perception check. So he actually uh, doesn't. He doesn't know you're here at all. Excellent. Uh, Verk and Jonas. I don't remember much. Was it you? <laughs> He's very bewildered. Last uh, time somebody pointed something like that at me, it hurt a lot. Do I still have the device, by the way, Dan? Yes, you do. Okay. You had that twenty-three uh, dexterity. You're holding that thing tight. Um, the device is mute, by the way. It's not saying anything. Uh, Verk, do you say anything? I won't say anything, but kind of out of like a protective thing, I'm going to put my arm in front of Jonas and kind of like push him back as I step forward. No, oh, don't touch me! <laughs> Just to kind of like, <coughs> almost like I'm going to... Don't even think about it! Put, put my Jesus. body between him and the, uh, the guy. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Dan, you should have injured me more in your other campaigns. <laughs> I really should have. Uh, <coughs> uh, so uh, this man uh, takes a single step forward. It says, I'm not hearing any names. Don't come hammered. any closer. We have a rogue back there. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll step out from behind this back here. Just kind of peek your head around the corner. Can you can you put that thing away, please? He brandishes it a little bit. Names. Davros. Both hands in the. I am. I'll say that I'm. Oh, go ahead. I don't know. You, 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 you. I was going to say, I'll, I'll say Verk as if he's supposed to know who I am. Uh huh. Just kind of <clears> a, <throat> a very cocky. I'm Verk. You're supposed to know this already. <clears throat> I feel like I'm on the ground sitting, but I'm propped up against the fountain. Like, that's how Verk that's maybe fair. propped me. So, yeah. I'm assuming that's a fountain, right? Um, yeah, it is. So, I go, and, and I'm Jonas. <clears throat> The, the <laughs> cheater of death, and, and, I, and I try to bow from half the waist, and I uh -huh. wince, and I wince the entire time, like. Ooh, ooh, ooh. God damn it! You know what? You're at full health. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. So he uh, kind of raises an eyebrow and says, <clears throat> "Where did you come from?" The world of uh, the world of worms. The what of what? That's where we came from. He looks back into the house as if he's making eye contact with somebody in there. Okay. Whoa. All right. I guess I need to be on the GM layer. Okay, this man appears <clears throat> behind him. He is a uh, nobleman. His hair is perfectly coiffed. He has an elegant beard, um, neatly shaved, uh, trimmed as of this morning. Um, rich brown eyes, a long, thin, hawk-like nose, um, a graceful, uh, if a little bit haughty demeanor, um, clothed in uh, purples and greens and browns. He has his hands behind his back, and he slowly comes up behind this um, this cook with the shotgun. And he says, let me pull up my sheet here. I forgot this guy's name. He says, Harkwell, please. And he puts his hand on the barrel of the shotgun and kind of lowers it. He sees uh, there's just a ton of blood on the ground, especially just from the, the first aid check alone. Like, you, a lot of blood has just been spilled. Uh, and your arms are covered with blood, I imagine, Burke, from patching this up. Uh, <clears throat> he says, these men are no condition to cause us any harm. Where was it you said you came from? 
We came from a world filled with worms. And they're and delirious. Brianna. They're delirious, Harkwell. They're they're clearly ill. They must have been ambushed and dropped off here. Let's take them inside, give them something to eat, and give them some, some place to rest. Harkwell looks at you guys very suspiciously, mutters something under his breath to Lord Jonathan. Lord Jonathan just kind of pats him back. Or sorry, his name is Lord Jonathan. He said he says, Lord Fairweather, as if to say this is a bad idea. Lord Fairweather just smiles and um, goes over to you, uh, Jonas. Actually, goes over to you, Vark, puts his hand on your shoulder and says, please, come with me. Um, Jonas, goes over to you, Jonas. Oh, I was going to say, Jonas start, could start immediately crawling to, towards the door. Yeah. He, He's immediately, he and, and like, if you would allow me, he uh, <clears throat> starts to crawl and turns back and he's like, oh, well, get my bags. <laughs> oh. As I walk to the, the house and food, good, famished. Um, this other man steps out uh, and you recognize this man, Verk. This man looks to be the spitting image of the warden who was questioning you in the prison. He eyes you up and down and does not seem to recognize you. Passes you right by, goes to Davros. And helps him up. He gives you an arm, Davros, to help you into the house. I'll take it. All right. So, all of you make your way into the house. Uh, Verk, do you do anything with this information or this this realization? Um, I'm going to say no. He's probably more focused on food than remembering a guy from few days ago okay uh that's fair uh during this whole process i'm going to keep a uh, special attention on all of well really the only belonging that i have <laughs> right uh, well technically i have the kitchen knives but sure 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 do you have that kitchen knife like visible or uh no it's pro uh, well Is there any way that I'd be able to stow it in my garden? Uh, roll me a... Uh, is there a um, sleight of hand? Yes. Roll me that. That's what I'm best at. I imagine it is. All right. Um, I'll roll perception if it ever becomes necessary that I want to see if you're armed. But for right now, no. No one, no one thinks you're armed. In fact, no one thinks any of you are armed because your sword looks like a cane. Uh, Jonas, Verk, you just have like your, your hands, and Davros, you've got a hidden knife, so you guys don't even look armed. Huh. Uh, 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 um, you guys are brought inside the house, uh, and uh, in there, I'll put you guys in here. So Verk was the only one to recognize that warden? Uh, no, I mean, if any of you have seen him, you would also recognize him. He's not like, this isn't like a, a Verk thing. It's He just he was the one who happened to be interrogating Verk. Um, but, um, because we each had our own person that was interrogating us, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, and it's funny, so as you walk in, you notice a couple things. Um, so I have all these guys labeled, which doesn't mean shit because you guys can't see labels, which is fucking stupid. Correct. <clears throat> oh, right, right, right. If, You'd but, have to give us edit, which is dumb. Yeah. If someone wants to like quickly Google, like it, how do you give, let players see nameplates without making them have edit access, that would be nice. But, um, yeah, I'm sorry guys. I really thought, uh, <clears throat> that this would be a little cleaner than that, but, um. I guess we're learning. Um, so, Jonas, you recognize Brightholm. And uh, Davros, you recognize the uh, young clerk who was questioning you. Um, Brightholm is this figure here in the green, the like teal cloak. In fact, I'll put them for, for identity purposes. Davros, you are now in front of Brightholm. 
uh, or no, Jonas would be right home. Uh, Burke and this guy, Darvis and this person. Bear with me two seconds, guys. Sorry. Yeah, take your time. I'm trying to Google to see if we can. All right, here we go. It says go to the token settings. Uh huh. Check off show nameplate. Uh huh. Go go to advanced tab uh -huh. under player permissions. Name. Check off C. Then everyone will be able to see the nameplate regardless on whether they have permission to use the token or not. Ah. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm sorry. Go go to advanced okay. and then do what? Oh, I'm going to put it in this. Ah. Like, you can see them. Hey, look at that. <sighs> okay. So can you do the same thing for the... the I'm, I'm doing them right now. The players, yeah. The hell? Yo, fucking. Okay, you don't want to. You don't want to magnify it. I get it. <clears throat> oh, so that's how you would spell bright home. <clears throat> and the prison was the Fairweather One. Correct. Mm. I'm not seeing any patterns. No. There's none to be there's none to see. <laughs> okay. So <coughs> if uh my side monitor here showing Twitch is accurate, you guys can have to see all nameplates. Um, yep. I'll, I'll make this real easy. I, I often like to skip past a lot of the, like, how do you find out this character's name? It just takes a lot of time that, that you know, we don't have, especially in a, in a truncated campaign format. So, Jonas, yep. you're brought over to this table, and you are laid upon it, and, of course, you are in front of it, and I, to front, to back. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh! Can you send the, the map to the back? There you yeah. go. Yeah, it, ooh, let me tell you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> so Jonas chilling on this table. So uh, uh, Jonas, you're being attended to by Brightholm. Davros, uh, the uh, clerk who is attending to you is named Serenity Harnum. Um, Verk, the uh, warden attending to you is Oberyn Fairweather. Um, in this house, there is Lord Jonathan Fairweather, uh, Lady Sybil Fairweather, his wife, and their daughter, Candace Fairweather. Also, their uh, cook, Harkwell and their um, butler, Naomi. Um, introductions are made over the course of the next few minutes. Uh, Lord Jonathan uh, is one to stand on ceremony, and even as he gets Jonas to a table uh, wherein Brightholm can start taking a look at him, uh, he introduces himself very briefly. These are my servants, and this is my family. Um, <coughs> I'd like you... Um, Davros, actually, to roll me a d uh, twelve. Hmm. Get that out of the way. Uh oh, fantastic! All right, so um, the house is decorated in bright uh yellow um um globes. 
like the, like paper lanterns hanging from the ceiling. Uh, the paper is made of some kind of material that also sparkles and catches the light. Um, so uh, there's like this uh, this light starlight effect. Um, also, uh, all the, the table runner, and you can see some. There was uh, some uh, food and, and trays on the table uh, that the chairs are around in, in the living room, uh, all covered in gold. It's all yellow and bright and golden. Um, and these all things seem like things that are decor rather than core features of the house. Upon a wall, there is a portrait of some divine being and a long scroll beneath it, reaching all the way to the floor. Uh, <coughs> uh, you can't read what it says at this distance. You're welcome to inspect it. Um, I'll start with... Um, Jonas, you're well. I'll start with Davros. Davros, so you're hurt, but you're good enough to to move. Uh, what do you do? Do you like tell them about this wound? Do you try to get it healed? Do you investigate things? What do you what do you do? And by the way, what do you all of you do? Recognizing that these are the people who prepared it. Um, are these yeah. the people that interrogated us? They don't recognize you, and they look like they come from this world. They are dressed so, appropriately. So they're dressed way. appropriately in in regards to this manner and yes. such they are wearing different clothes from the last time we saw them. Correct. And mm -hmm. they do not visibly recognize you. Ah, uh, yes. Um I'm not gonna bring anything up as if <clears throat> they seem familiar to me yet. Mm -hmm. Um and Brick patched him up pretty good. So he's gonna kind of leave the Leave the uh, the wound as is, um, but he will uh, recognizing that there are uh, proper ways to go about things. He'll address uh, Lord Fairweather. I am absolutely famished. Would it be possible to get some sort of sustenance? Oh, it would be our pleasure, of course. Harkwell! Harkwell kind of quietly comes over. He says, immediately fetch these men something to eat. Jonas, uh, as a reflex, claps. <laughs> like, weak, like he's like deliriously clapping <laughs> on the table. <clears throat> uh, Harkwell nods, uh, but clearly distrusts you guys. And uh, goes off into the kitchen to prepare something. Thank you very much, my lord. Uh, please, on, on this, the day of mourning, absolutely, it is, we could do not else. Um, and he invites you to have a seat with him um, around this, uh, this table. Uh, do you do so? Yeah, I'll join him. I'll okay. sit. Uh, oh, you can move your guy. I'll, I'll, I'll wait until he gestures, because I don't want to... Do so. I, I don't want to sit in a chair that may be reserved for mental. Okay. Um, he gestures at a, a, a chair opposite him then. Um, and uh, Lady Sybil also sits there, and their daughter Candace sits down as well. Uh, Naomi uh, brings over um, a tray of uh, drinks and then stands in the corner. She still stands like here. Um, waiting to see if anything else is needed. Um, so this is the entire Fairweather family sitting with you, Davros. Verk, do you, what do you do? Um, I'm just going to kind of plop there, kind of almost like a crashing. Uh, immediately, one of, uh, he asks Naomi to get you a chair. Uh, they grab a chair. Do you sit in it? Sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as I'm as I'm sitting down, where's this grub you've been talking about? Uh, Lord Jonathan looks at you and says, "Oh, it 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 it'll be just a moment. I assure you. Please, uh, let allow me to to check." And he he uh looks over at Naomi. She leaves the room. She comes back. She nods. He goes, "Just just another moment, uh, travelers. Uh, if you can steady yourselves, uh." And he notices a little bit of blood on you, Davros. He goes, uh, Sir, Davros, I believe, was it, uh, are you in need of attention? Um, I should be fine. Uh, my companion here, Verk, he 
he he tended to it. I it, it should be all right. I may need a change of clothes at some point, but uh, as far as the wound itself, it my my natural state should take. Um, he he nods. He says, "But better to have Brightholm look at it uh, later tonight, perhaps. Just just to be safe. Wouldn't want any infection." Um, in a moment later, Harkwell comes into the room, bringing uh, a bunch of trays of food, meats and cheeses and breads, um, uh, big goblets of wine, um, and I'm assuming Verk, you just tear into it. Yeah, I mean, just kind of uncivilized. As food, he just <clears throat> almost going at it. Him. Yeah. One one would say. As Harkwell walked past me on the table, I grabbed a cheese cube off of the offering. <clears throat> and from the elbow, <clears throat> so my upper arm isn't moving, I try to flick the cheese cube to my face and just absolutely it's a one. It's a it's a dex roll, it's a one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Great. <laughs> it just um, pops onto the floor. <laughs> would I be able to subtly investigate before I consume Investigate the food? Yeah. Uh sure. Roll me, I'm assuming perception is still a thing. Investigation, perception, one or the other. Uh, uh, what, do you, what are you trying to ascertain? I'm trying to notice if there seems to be any kind of smells or texture or anything that seems off from He's making sure it's not cheese lace. or meat that I know. Uh, oh, wait, did, did they split perception and investigation? Did they split that again? Yeah, did, yes. Dumb! God, that, that's so stupid. It should, it's it's all the same thing. It's perception. Anybody with those two skills, just go ahead and merge them. Um, roll whichever those is higher for now. Uh, Dominus, but it's, I'm just going to call it perception. We don't need fucking two skills for that shit. It looks, I mean, you don't, maybe some of the spices smell a little different to you, but by and large, it seems to be meat and cheese. It's not made of worms or anything. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it seems to be real food. Why would that be so, a concern? I will also partake in that case. Okay. <coughs> uh, Jonas, you are laying on the table, delirious, seeing visions of things. Your uh, strange figures pass before your eyes, and you are certain that you see, in your moments of delirium, the sight of mourning, god of uh, righteousness, the sun, and the heavens. Um. Morning looks a lot like how the like Christian white Jesus uh with uh cloaked in gold and a gleaming white uh wearing a full suit of plate mail um long flowing blonde hair uh surrounded by doves and a halo of light at all times um he looks down at you and he says, "Does this hurt? Don't touch it." How about here, he says. Stop thinking about it! <laughs> what happened to you? He says. They touched it. Okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> as you sort of fade in from the pain, you see that it's just Brightholm standing over you asking you these questions. <clears throat> um, and he realizes you're not going to be any help, and he immediately goes to work. Um, he is going to cast <coughs> a, a cure spell on you, Jonas. Uh, go ahead and gain one wounds. <clears throat> and this cure spell restores a lot of your um, <clears throat> sort of presence of mind. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Um, you're in great pain, but you're no longer like delirious and uh, in shock. Um, <clears throat> he sets you up. Uh, he notices that, like, actually, he can't really do a better job than Verk did. Uh, it was quite a good patch job, and so uh, he'll attend to you again tomorrow. But for now, you're as good as it's going to get. Um, uh, there is actually a uh, the, the <laughs> uh, uh, Brightholm uh, looks over to Naomi, gives her some, words, and Naomi goes into the kitchen and then into a side room, and you hear her clomping down some stairs into what is presumably the basement. She comes back up, and you see her pull out this folded, rickety device that she kind of, with great effort, uh, props open and realize that it is some sort of wheeled chair. 
um, which is covered in dust, and there's a couple spider webs on it, but she brushes them off and sits you down in it and uh, wheels you over to the main room. I don't know if Jonas considers this maybe throne-like. Uh, oh my, a proper ch chariot for our proper friend. Jonas <sighs> stares at Davros and without breaking eye contact takes a piece of cheese off of his plate and <laughs> slowly brings it up to his mouth and eats it. Uh, so Davros shakes his head. Lord Jonathan, or, or Lord, uh, Lady Sybil actually, in earnestness now, asks you she she's she's not nearly as um long suffering as her husband. She asks you what happened. Is she addressing Brianna all bit of me. us? What'd you say, uh Davros? Is she addressing all of us? Yes. Whoever, it doesn't matter who talks, she just wants to know what actually happened. How did how did three people with two of whom have been shot arrive? in their uh, uh, statue, uh, their grounds for sculpture, without them noticing and, you know, how did you get hurt? What, what, what caused this? Did you hear what I said, though? I did not. Brianna bit me. She looks at this. Who's Brianna? Um, before before the, the conversation can travel down that path, <laughs> Davros is going to hold up a hand and he'll say... Before we continue in this conversation, my friends and I, we come from a land, an area pretty far away from here, we think. Um, we seem to find ourselves in a predicament. Uh, we don't really know where we are or where we need to be. Um, where are we? She looks at you a little confused and says, Well, this is Fairweather Manor. Our home, our ancestral estate. Um, where did you think you were going? Away from where we were. And where were you? I, I know it sounds crazy, but we were on the world of... She looks at you and looks back at her husband, and she says, one more time. I, at this point, <clears throat> Jonas leans into Davros and asks him, you know, I put up my hand to the, to the crowd of Fairweathers, and I go, excuse me just a moment. <clears throat> and I lean in, and I get his buy-in to come closer to me with an earshot. <clears throat> Does, does Davros respond? I'm thinking. <laughs> um, sure. He leans in. Act like we're talking. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what uh, yeah, yep, 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 yep. So listen. <clears throat> oh my god. It hurts to think about breathing. What? Okay. <clears throat> so you guys said we were shot? I just I I want to make sure like is that is that what you think happened to us? They look very confused. Look back at you. Yes, you were shot. Do mm, you not yeah. remember? Yeah. No. No, you know what? I don't. So if you guys could explain um Maybe how does how does one um how does one come by a shot? <laughs> you hear a click behind you as Harkwell <laughs> reaches for the shotgun <laughs> on the wall. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Um you know what? It's coming back. Please. It's coming back. It it, it will be a favor for all of us. <laughs> a favor for all of you what? She stands up. You are either madmen or you take us for fools. I How did, did you get here? You yeah. can't have come from worms, she says, as if it's like a, a you're just clearly making things up. 
You can't, you've been shot but can't remember it. You came into our garden leaving no trace on this, this holy festival day of mourning. And you expect us to believe, and uh, Jonathan tries to grab her to like calm her down, and she will have none of it. She shakes his hand off. Uh, <laughs> and you expect us to believe that you don't remember where you came from, where you're going, where you are, what a shot is, and how you got shot? We can know I lean over? We got... Go can ahead. I lean over to uh, Jonas? For, like I like Brianna better. <laughs> oh, we know where we came from. We've told you multiple times. That's not a place. That is not a country nor a city. It is not a that hamlet you know nor of. village. No, nothing within this. Nothing within the distance of this country. And you certainly were not shot there because you would not have made the trip wherever this place is from. So you were shot here, or near enough to here, that we could get to you in time. How were you shot? Who shot you? Men with glowing eyes. Uh, well, don't roll me bluff, because that is true. Uh, <coughs> she kind of, like, narrows her eyes at you. Uh, Lord Jonathan uh, is no longer trying to silence her, because he also begins to to kind of catch on, like, you're right, this is weird. Uh, Harkwell, um, I'll say Davros, you notice this, where Jonas, actually, Virk, you probably noticed this too, Jonas, you don't notice shit. Uh, Harkwell grabs the shotgun now off the wall completely and is now holding it, just calmly. And uh, Brightholm says for it and says, uh, Lords and ladies, if I may, I know I am but a guest in your home, uh, here at the to serve at your pleasure and by the grace of your son, Oberyn. Oberyn kind of hasn't said anything so far and he just nods quietly. Uh, <clears throat> if I may examine these travelers, perhaps a curse has been put upon them, some manner of confusion spell. If they do mean us ill, I will be able to ascertain the truth of it. Uh, Jonathan nods and says, travelers, I'm sure you understand. Of course. Whatever you need. <clears throat> um, Brightholm... <coughs> Brightholm uh, goes over to... Um, uh, I guess she's closest to you, Davros. Um, she lays her... Uh, or he, sorry. Brightholm is a, is a guy. Um, <laughs> he lays his hand upon your forehead and he begins to mutter an incantation. Uh, do you know anything about spells? Zero. Okay. So you don't know what the spell is. Jonas, you recognize that she is beginning to uh, cast uh, Detect Thoughts. Okay. Um, the spell casts, and then she begins to cast Zone of Truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Davros, you feel her begin to slowly work her way deeper and deeper into your mind, and uh, she, you, you and her are in um, a room that looks. When you close your eyes, you are in this very same room, but it's only you and her. Um, you in your chair, and her um, kind of crouched over um, or bent over. Uh, I keep saying her. I guess Red Holmes a girl now because I keep using kind of. <laughs> Uh, uh, her hand upon your forehead, and she says, where did you come from? We came from the world of worms. Um, are you imagining what world of worms was like? Exactly, as much as so I can remember. The mansion then transforms into this, just like it was in the world of worms. Give me a second while I move everybody's tokens back to the other map, and uh, spend 15 minutes getting that to work. <laughs> Sorry, uh, guys. No, no, it's fine. So, uh, you, you see yourself there, and she goes, and you said these men with glowing eyes? I'll do the best to picture um, the scene where we're at the well and they were approaching us. With it, the, with the... You know, maybe it's almost like a, like the, the fear gas and the scarecrow, uh, like the Batman comics were like, to you, these men are like, like, you don't know what like tech is, right? So maybe they're monstrous. Maybe they have these like weird bulging eyes that glow. And like uh, the, the way you present these men is maybe not quite how they look, but a little more fearsome. Okay. Uh, and uh, she, she seems to nod 
and and she you see the she hears the gunshots she sees in this vision are you presenting it exactly as uh as it happened so with with the, the uh I device and don't all? want to and i i want to keep the device out of it if i can all uh, right so i'd like you to roll me a charisma save fail the device is visible because that's what was actually there she goes curious in this device you had where is it now do i have to tell the truth <laughs> you're in a zone of truth so if you don't tell the truth i'm going to make you make a save every time um I feel like the Jeopardy music should be playing. I know, yeah. sorry. Um, I lost it in. All right, roll me a charisma save. Oh, dice can't be much worse. Oh, than oh come on! Oh, no. <laughs> it uh, it really I'm can. Ask you to maybe uh, <laughs> let, let the charisma monkey do the charisma rolling. All right. I am one of the charisma monkeys. So, I don't so think so. Hold on. Hold on. This is a great time to introduce this. How badly would you like to I make that roll? Would like to make that roll. Like a lot. I'm fairly certain I would like to make that roll. Okay. So, you feel the device kind of stirs. Uh, uh, in the real world, you feel it tucked under your clothes, begins to warm up, and you uh, are taken back. Mentally, and this this appears in the um, uh, in the vision. To the moment that that bullet missed you, but then still hit you in the shoulder, and you feel the device querying you. It is asking you for a fate adjustment, or asking you. As if it seems to query, as if it, it seems that's what you're asking it to do, and it's asking you to confirm this. I would like to confirm. All right. You make that roll. You make it at a 20. Not a natural 20, which is to say a, a natural rolled 20 that indicates a critical, su critical success, but the sum total, however it is you did this, is a 20. Uh, in the vision, the device cools, and in the vision, uh, you uh, uh, you see the bullet hit the device, and it flies out of your hand, which is what you want her to see. Right. <clears throat> um, you have one of those left. You have one of those fate points left in your hand. Um, this resource uh, allows you to succeed any dice roll, but not critically does that make sense so you have it yeah. basically you're taking 20 but if if there's if it's the kind of roll that could be crit like an attack roll you can't crit you can choose to roll and like roll for a crit but then you can't use this this fate power so you automatically automatically succeed but you cannot crit you get two of them you have just used one of them you don't know when you get them back but you know you have one more okay <laughs> Um, and then she goes, hmm, unfortunate. She seems to believe you. But, and she sees around you that it is clearly looks like the, the, it's like this manner, but in a different way. She goes, but how did you get there? The same way we got here. You take her back to the your home world? Um... Yeah, and I'm going to imagine all of the hellfire and brimstone as it existed. And we she were trying to escape a dying world. Our dying world. And she takes you back again. Where did you get... Or, and, and how did you find these other men? She's clearly looking for something. She's suspicious of something, and as she continues to take you back... You realize you're going to eventually hit the fact where you are put in prison. Mm. 
Hmm. Uh, can I put a focus on the scene where we are at the at, like facing away from the prison, but in the prison yard where the angel man came down? Yeah, sure. I'd like to f specifically focus on that part. <laughs> When Danny uh, Angelman when came, we were running as we were running away from not the prison, but focus more on the destruction. Um, roll me opposed. We're gonna roll a opposed um, charisma here. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. The only, the only way to go is up. You're done lying. <laughs> I was going to say, I have a like, deception have, skill. They could have also had a, uh, a natural one, too. So They could have. So this isn't deception, though. What this is is a battle of wills I to know. direct the nature of this. Okay. And at that point, you, 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 um, you protest too much. You try to focus so hard on that that she realizes at that moment something's up. And she just, you see her turn around in this vision. Uh oh. To look behind you. And she sees, it says, Fairweather One. Oh, no. Written on the walls. And she sees it as clearly a prison. She looks down. All of a sudden, your weird, ragged outfit makes sense while you're all wearing the same outfit. And she takes a step back. Her hand comes off your forehead. She, um,. By the way, this little this light behind her is a chandelier on the ceiling. It's not in the middle of the room. Um, and she says, "Sir, they're criminals." Harkwell cocks the gun. Laura Jonathan and Lady Sybil stand up. Oberyn draws his sword. Uh, but Verk and Jonas were not privy to that whole exchange, right? Nope. They yep. just see her over the course of about <clears throat> six seconds. Put her uh, her hand on his forehead, and then. Uh, start back and say they're criminals, which is true. <laughs> I'm just gonna put my hands up, like I'm <laughs> non-violent criminals. I'm, I'm. Oh! Um, oh! Roll, me roll me deception. Roll me deception. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not a charisma saving throw. <clears throat> is there still sense motive? I still, for some reason, have not found a skill. In insight. 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 Wisdom based, I imagine? Yes. Okay. She is proficient. Um, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jesus. Yep. Man. I got I, it. I'm sorry. That wasn't even a lie. <laughs> uh, non violent. I, you said I, we are non violent criminals. Oh, that's right. I did say that. <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> uh, okay. That's. I'm so, not. So I'm she a non can tell you're lying, which is I, worse the, because now when you correctly tell her that you, you're nonviolent, she won't even believe you because you already lied about we being non. Ch channeling a scene from Ghostbusters, I'm like, what did you do, Dav? What did you do? Uh, she says, she now she's making a leap here. But judging from your wounds and the prison, she goes, they're murderers. And uh, Lady Sybil says in this really severe tone, I will ask you once more now, why did you come here? We were trying to escape with our lives. That's the truth. You can have her do whatever kind of mind magic she wants. Brightholm says, escaping from a prison with your lives. From a dying world. Where you were and in prison. Maybe you should have died in that world. That may be. However, when an opportunity presents itself, fate works in mysterious oh. Perhaps this is oh. our second chance. Well, here is the problem. You've arrived here on the feast day, and you rolled this, Kurt. 
Oh, so this no. is your fault. On the feast day of uh, morning, God of righteousness, the sun in the heavens. <coughs> um, <coughs> let's uh, let's weigh this out. Um, oh, this would be a great time for a duel of wits, uh, Frats, if I had that. Yeah. Right <laughs> uh, 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 maybe someday I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll show you guys that. That's not important um, for a, a mini campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say? That's probably not important for a mini campaign like this. No, it's it. That would be a whole fucking. That would be a three hours by itself. By itself. Uh, uh, there's a system in Burning Wheel called Duel of Wits, which I'm, it's probably my favorite uh, combat system in any in any uh, any RPG, any tabletop game where it's uh, combat, but it's a, a duel of of wits, just like it sounds, and it's like charisma based argumentative combat and you like script moves and like you counter attack and like moves counter other moves and some moves have like weaknesses and like it's like straight up... screwed yeah it's... oh you'd be, you'd be. <laughs> well no there are there are moves like ugly truth and intimidate that would yeah. that you could use so like anyone can do it you're just limited to what your character would naturally like how yeah. would they argue a point um yeah it's, it's it's my favorite thing but it takes like fucking hours um, cause imagine every time you rolled a, a D20, you replace that with rolling a dice pool and then elaborately explaining what your argument is and why they should believe you. Anyway, we're not doing that. Um, whoops, whoops, whoops. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, Laura Jonathan says, it is the feast day of mourning. God of righteousness first. But is it more righteous to strike these men down for crimes they have committed? He doesn't seem super sold on this other world business, but like she, Brightholm, is clearly very uh, uh, certain that you guys came from a prison. Regardless of any world shenanigans, you were prisoners and violent ones at that. Uh, or is it more righteous to allow them in this place a second chance? He kind of like leans in very closely to you, Verk, kind of look, looking in, like really looking in your face, looking in your eyes. Uh, do you react to this? I'll take a second chance. And if it's a day of feast, I'm hungry. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Um, how could we execute this simpleton? This man clearly <laughs> without his wits. Uh, Lord Fairweather walks over to the globe that is in the um, bottom corner of the room here, and he spins it. He stops. He says. I don't know what to make of this. I have heard of those that walk the plains, and I know of heaven and hell, and I know not from which you are from. You've said worms, and that sounds rather hell-like to me, but... It was. Can we, can we, this... can we stop telling him we're evil people? Yeah. <laughs> we, like, we, they figured out we're from a prison, and now you're telling them we're coming from hell. It was not... <laughs> Hell, it was hellish. <laughs> Meaning, it was not pleasant. <clears throat> it was uh, a jest. Please. <clears throat> um, and he says, I will leave this decision to my daughter. And the whole room kind of turns to her. Like, what? Jonas perks up. Turn to her too. Jonas perks Candace up. Look... <laughs> God damn it. Are you also... So you're you're that character. You're like also trying to like... You're, you have three wounds and like you'd probably try to hit that. Uh, I mean, I well, I'd, she's for she's like fourteen, so maybe not. Yeah, no, she's I mean, for Jonah. <clears throat> uh, and she yeah. um, she looks up surprised. He kind of looks around the room and he says, "Often, we have learned too much, and come too far, and we are burdened by our experiences, our preconceptions." Sybil says, these preconceptions are what make us wise. And she stares you guys down. And uh, Jonathan continues, I would have Candace speak because perhaps this is time for mercy. And who among us is more merciful and more beautiful? Uh, uh, here, here. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Candace looks at you all, and she stands up and like smooths out her dress, and she says, "They might be prisoners, but they are hurt. We would be poor hosts if we let harm come to them. If bandits." came into the house and tried to harm our guests, we would defend them. And so these are our guests. They should stay the night and be on their way in the morning. That is fair enough. Thank you. Harkwell seems displeased. You hear him kind of grunt as he uncocks the shotgun, puts it back on the wall next to the fireplace. The gun says check off on the barrel, you notice. Uh, and uh, no one? All right, that's fine. Um, and uh, Na uh, Naomi, uh, com still completely expressionless, um, removes the food from the center, the, the empty plates, and puts them back into the kitchen. Uh, the uh, Jonathan says that it is, it is so. Please, uh, let me show you to your quarters. So, uh, anyone do anything immediately before you are shown to your quarters? <clears throat> um, Thank I, Candace for her decision. <clears throat> she nods. I <coughs> I think Jonas would ask Jonathan. Um, he said he knows about people who have been able to walk the planes, but is am i am i able to piece together that he's talking about so he's very these are talking about a school of magic that you know of plane which walking like, yeah plane, which yeah, which is like the, in DC this universe shit. there are additional yeah. different places right like the astral plane where you get your magic from heaven and hell those are all pretty standard and those are all completely different places but There's in only this one in this universe. In any universe you've ever. In your universe too. Right. But am I. But what what I'm getting at is. Would Jonas realize that. He's talking about planes. Which are a well known thing. That people are able exactly, to travel. Right. He, he's not talking about like you guys fundamentally. A copy of a different world. Yes. Which we are now piecing together as. Right. You know, this is a different version of the same geographical location that we were at. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so the prison existed at the same geographical location where the compass then ripped us to the world of worms. And then yep. now, now, do we know it's the constellations or do, I don't remember yeah, it telling oh yeah, us it, that. It, was, he, it, it said it was like it was like the, the compass said that this was constellations. He can hold while <clears throat> he finds more options for him or you can go now. And he was like, oh, 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 oh. so, you know, it's constellations. So, okay. So after all that, and being able to piece together that he understands plane walking, but we obviously are starting to come to the realization that that's different than what's happening to us. Um, I'm questioning why there are things, technology in this world, that seem... Um, what's what's the word for... Uh, that seem physical... Not arcane, maybe. Is it arcane? What, what's non-magical? M mundane. 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 Okay, so there's mundane technologies in this world, like like this weapon that we maybe recognize from the glowing eye guys that Harkwell yeah. cocked, right? But we still don't know it's a gun. You know, yeah. we still don't know what it did to us. Um, well, but that, it shot you. Well, right, 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 right. And, <laughs> but we don't know how I came by the shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you, uh, yeah, no, yeah, you don't. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So but you know they're bad. You know it's bad news. So in this world of mundane technologies, so far that we've seen, we have Brightholm here, who's uh, using regular magic that we're familiar with. Yes. So I point at Brightholm and I'm like, "What gives?" She doesn't know what you mean. Well, I I'm. There, there seems to be. Well, no. So let me ask. So, oh no, Brightholm was the healer for me, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so you seem a mage and/or healer of of incredible power, uh, but yet there, there's a lot of mundane, um, 
you know, uh, items here in, in this mansion and in, in uh, around the, the grounds here. Well, are, are you are you special, you know, to the Fairweathers or or, uh, you know, are you uh, uh, are people of your of your power and, and ability common? Uh, so <clears throat> she first of all doesn't trust you guys because she's the one who found out that you're all. As far as she can start all murderers, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll gloss. This is this is like a long, weird, like discovery thing. I'll kind of like shortcut it for you if if you don't mind, given the smaller session time. Sure. So you, over the course of this conversation, um, realize that she, she doesn't understand what you're asking. As in, it's not weird. People have magic. People also have technology. That isn't a weird thing. Okay. Uh, she doesn't give you an answer, but you you realize that you're like your second or third time rephrasing it that like that is the answer like that that's not a thing anyone would think twice about. Um, certainly, these people have money, so they can afford like better things, as you can tell. They're they're well to do. Uh, not everyone will have a you know a manservant, very nice shotgun, but it's not weird that you'd have a mage and a a, a gun in the same room. Um, you uh, learn that. You start to piece together just from actually. What's your what's your um. What are your social skills? Mm, what do you mean? Like skills. What are the ones that are social? I don't know how else to phrase that question. Like you, on Insight, your skills. Insight, deception, performance. Like, what are the ones you're good at? Those kind of. Um. Persuasion, I'm excellent at. Um, sleight of hand, I'm okay. Religion, I'm okay. Or good. Uh, I have deception. I have arcana. I have history. I have intimidation. Why don't you roll me religion and persuasion? Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oof. All right. So <coughs> she st still hates you. Certain enough <laughs> to no good. She. She. The more you question her, the more she thinks you're trying to get data like leverage or you're trying to get like a one up on her. And once she realizes that she basically shuts and stops answering your questions. But you guys are you guys need to learn to roll a little bit better. Uh before that happens, uh however, you're able to piece together that this world places great import everything is uh, uh cycled around the gods. Festival days that last into weeks. Um there are actually every god has their own month. This is the month of mourning. Uh, they are uh, they do everything by divine um, omen. They seek the gods uh, in all things, as you can tell from the conversation. They try to do things based on what the, they think the, they think the gods might have them do. Um, and uh, mm. in, in this setting, uh, as I said, technology, magic are hand in hand um certainly at a level beyond what, what you're used to um and i don't know if this intrigues you in terms of like gaining if you still are on this quest to gain divinity but this world is one that reveres the gods totally and completely not only are there no atheists there's probably nobody that that also like because you know how in, in a normal setting you might everyone believes in gods but you may not actually like verk doesn't pay them any mind yeah that wouldn't stand in this world yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone is devoted to a god in some capacity. Um, but you don't get much more than that because she fucking hates you and is pretty sure that you're trying to weasel your way into one-upping her on something and she walks away. So, so uh, can I wheel around nonchalantly and look at the... I think there was, you, there was a portrait, you said, that had some writing, but we couldn't see it from where we were. Yes. Um, could I wheel around nonchalant, like, mm, yes, yes, yeah, but bed sounds good, mm, yes, yeah, you know, whatever, yeah. and and then slowly, but so I'm trying to do it inconspicuously. Okay. Um. Yeah, but let's leave you there because you just had a conversation. Let's see what Verk's doing. Okay, now. that's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so Verk, what do you what do you do, or do you just go upstairs? I mean, yeah, I'll just I'll head upstairs. I don't have any particular thing I need to okay. look for or gain knowledge of. Okay. Uh, uh, Davros? Um, I will also go with Verk. Just go upstairs, okay? Yes. 
Um, so then I guess we are back to you, uh, Jonas. Uh, Davros and Burke are, uh, are not doing anything. Um, oh, and he's gone. <laughs> I was going to say best not to best not to Rock jostle them yeah. anymore since we've got a favorable uh, decision in our in our way. Yeah, yeah. If if not a favorable disposition, at least a favorable decision. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, this is a good time to take five. Actually, Frax is God. If he comes back, let him let him know. I'll put in the chat uh, taking. I'm gonna blow my nose and get a drink, and okay. uh, I'll, I'll be back. Okay. All right. Guys, I'm sorry. Uh, what happened? We break in? Hello? Oh, taking five. Okay. Uh, okay.
May the Lords of Citrus be ever in your favor. We, we've been doing a, a tour of the Liquid Seltzers. And, uh, Perrier was on sale. That shit's expensive as hell, but it was a really good sale. It's, let me tell you, it's delicious. I have done a bunch of different kinds, um, but I, our tip, my typical go-to is Wegmans brand yeah. because they have so many different flavors to choose from. And, and Wegmans is great. I'm about to do a line of the Mints of Thin. Ah, the Mints of Thin. That's oh, you're about that's an, to do a line. <laughs> I that's the most barbarian thing you've said this entire campaign. That's true. That's the most. <laughs> that's that's the most barbarian. Mm, these young female cookies <laughs> will I go up my right. nose. Um, so uh, Jonas, you were inspecting this wall decor. Always a safe bet in my campaigns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, doors and and wall decor. I am not yeah, stupid. Um, no, so uh, I'm not going to do painting stuff this campaign. Just I figured. That's that's. I don't need to get into that shit. Anyway, um, you see so, in front of you a painting. Yeah, <laughs> you do. It's a painting of mourning. Lord of Righteousness. I um, recognize him. As, as described. Uh, the scroll beneath it is a long, elegant prayer to mourning. Um, uh, it is eff effusive and beautiful. It's a little ostentatious. Um, it speaks of uh, his great power and might. It's written like a high priest of mourning might write. But judging by what you've learned briefly of this world, you get the sense that it might just be like next month, it'll be an equally devout thing to a different god. Not particularly that this house values mourning, perhaps, but that it is simply his day, and and they on his day they act like you know good Catholics, as it were, uh, and and give him the devotion he deserves. Um, it does speak very strongly about punishing the unjust. That is a really clear through line there. Um, in fact, the more you read it, the more you get the sense that if Candace was a little less nice. Or rather that Candace may not have done the most mourning like thing here. Um, there's long sections devoted to the swiftness with which he will punish evildoers. So so there's that. It certainly doesn't comfort you to read this, I'm sure. Uh, anything else? Um mm. I, I mean, there's nothing, as far as a perception check, there's nothing crazy or out of the ordinary or something something that's out of place that Jonas would would have noticed. Uh, I'll give you a perception if you uh, want to. If I roll one. it? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, don't fuck it up. But, well, you know. I'm going to one. Uh, perception. It's pretty good. Yeah, actually. It's pretty great. Um, uh, oh, and well, I should have uh, mentioned this before. Um, when you made that terrible persuasion crawl, maybe. It's too late now. But um, uh, you feel uh, that same um, warmth that Davros felt, even though you're not in the same room as him, you feel a connection to that that compass, uh, that device, and you feel this when you made that uh, that nat one persuasion roll. You for a minute, for a second, saw a glimpse of that conversation going differently, and you wildly succeeding in her uh, smiling at you, almost like um, I, I there's got to be a media property that does this and i just can't think of it because i'm sick but like um something where a character is going crazy and they just keep seeing flashes of things that aren't there you know what i'm talking about like a, a couple frames pop on the screen of like a thing that isn't happening um or how like an ant-man and the wasp there was like images of the the ghost character doing things that maybe she wasn't doing you know what i'm talking about okay does that like does that track with the tvs yeah that's that's a good example too so you get that sense. What I'm just justifying is why you have access to fate, or what it feels like to have access to fate. I I got you. Okay. Right. So you you kind of got a glimpse that like maybe you could have pushed that differently had you been quicker on the uptake. Um. So you also have a pool of two fate. So does Ver. Um. 
it's very instinctive. You're barely, you're almost not even choosing to like, uh, Kurt, you're, you're not even saying like, I would like to use this resource. It's more like you into it. Like, God, I really need to do this. And the device reacts accordingly. Does that make sense? Like it, it helps you do it. Yeah. You as the player have obviously free reign to use those two whenever you want. But in game, it's like your character just sort of like they activate that device almost um, not accidentally, but you know, instinctually. So, instinct. Thank you. Instinctually. Um, does that make sense for you too, uh, Bill? Yep, I'm good. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so I nailed so, my perception check. Great perception check. Um, I was reading, DCs are a lot lower in 5e. You're supposed to run them, like, much, much lower. Um, so, uh, you, as you are, as you see the, the spiral staircase, can I ping the map? Uh. Long click. You see wow. the pops up on Crassus. Yeah, it did. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see, you see the staircase. So that's the staircase up. Um, you'll notice that there are these double doors here. Mm -hmm. And I didn't draw all the windows and doors in this because I didn't have the time. But there are, uh, are these giant glass windows to either side of the door. And as you wheel up, and there's a couple people there um, who uh, uh, Oberyn um, and Harkwell. Uh, actually, no, Harkwell and Naomi go to help you up the stairs because you can't wheel up the stairs. They're going to like put you on their shoulders and help you up there. You catch a glimpse of the study. Which had that, that you had investigated in the last world, and all the books, and just by a glimmer, you catch the spine, a red and gold spine of one of the books that you had been reading in World of Worms, the very same book. And then you are carried up the stairs. Um, that's Hawk the well. one thing that stands. The, the World of Worms had not a ton of uh, things of note because it was so desolate. So there wasn't much that you might recognize, but that is, uh, it clearly gleams in, in the light from the window. Did you say something? Did I cut you off? Yeah, I said, Harkwell. Okay. He, he like, is just holding himself back from just dropping you on the stairs. And he <laughs> says, yes, sir. K car carry on. <laughs> okay. So you stopped him. <laughs> to tell him to keep carrying you up the stairs. God, he's going to he's going to smother you in your sleep. Uh he's not the only one. No. Uh, <clears throat> uh you are carried upstairs and uh uh you guys are are taken to your your shown where your chambers are. Now, let's fast forward to um when it is time to sleep. In between now and when it is time to sleep, um what happens? We don't have to act it out necessarily uh, dramatically, but does anybody do anything? Do you just like, do you, Jonas, maybe just go right the fuck to sleep because you're so hurt? Does anybody go back downstairs, have a drink, to talk to the family some more? Does anybody do anything? Are, how are the... I, don't, I, I know you said we're not going to hardcore play it out, but if the beds are close enough, I take my cane sword, which is sheathed, and <clears throat> so it's in cane mode, and uh, I hold the... I don't know what what the hell's the the handle of it the the top of it, uh -huh. um, the hilt. and sure I hold the hilt, but it looks like a cane, so it's not like a yeah you know what I mean it's like a nub or a knob more than whatever. Yeah. But I hold that, and I uh, thrust it, but with very little force, you know, just to just to poke, and I and I poke Davros before I'm falling asleep, like eyes closed and everything. I'm just doing it out of like instinct, and I'm like, you, you're done with the lying. I put it away. Uh, I, okay. I, I will say, okay. Uh, <laughs> Would you like me to roll a deception? <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Uh, it's as He said it was as he's falling asleep. Even if you're lying, he can't tell. He, he does not have okay. the wherewithal right now to detect deception. <laughs> uh, I see that you stash your, you stash your knife. Um, and uh, it, it is successfully done. Uh, and then, and then, is that all you do? You just also go to bed? Um, I we're all in the same room. Uh, sure. I think we should set up watches. Interesting. Jeez. Why would you set up watches? So there is always someone awake to make sure that no one comes in and, like Harkwell, um, smothers Jonas 
uh, we're making a lot of assumptions here about uh, oh. <laughs> a family that's been really kind to you. But yeah. uh, I mean, sure, Except I guess. Except for the guy with the shotgun. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, that's that's fine. You guys are being really ungrateful here. I I, I feel, but that's it's fine. Uh, so, uh, Verk, do you do anything? I've got nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, you guys then uh, spend the rest of the the evening uh, <clears throat> quietly, and then eventually. Uh, Oh yeah, sorry. Do you guys do you set up the watch? And uh, Davros, if so, do you wake up Jonas to ask him to stand watch with you guys, or is it just you and Burke? Uh, no, Davros is setting it up, right? I'll, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll let I'll let his lordship have his. He needs his beauty rest. Huh? What? He? I need my beauty rest. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So they're gonna let me sleep through it. I if not, I was going to. Uh, I was well. I I had an idea for how to play that out, but that's fine. I'll sleep the whole time. Uh, Davros and Vert, do you guys split the watch fifty fifty? Um, yes. Oh, okay. I would say that's fine. Okay. Um, each of you roll me uh, Constitution saves, please. Damn. Lovely. Uh, that is enough sleep for both of you. Even if it's a half night, you're not fatigued. In the, uh, you're going to be fatigued or suffer any penalties. Uh, you guys are, are, are hardy folk. Um, <coughs> I'm going to roll my own little... Uh, can you guys see that roll? No. Lovely. Okay. Nope. We're discussing the, the GM roll. Okay. Um, I'll have you know I rolled max for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, who's first and who's second watch? I'll take first. Oh, so I was gonna say since you had uh, the lower wounds, I'll let you sleep first. Uh, I'd prefer to get more regular sleep, so I'll stay up and then I'll get a longer period without interruption. After. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Um, so you, so, so Verk has second watch. Correct. Got it. Well, Verk, um, mm -hmm. you, uh, are awoken by, by Davros and you, uh, how do you stand guard? What do you just sit up in bed? Do you sit by the door? What do you do? What room are we in? Uh, uh, there's a top floor to this mansion that I didn't have time to draw, but there's a, a top floor and there's a, a, a guest suite with a couple of beds and like a, a pullout that they like a lounge, a chaise lounge that they put themselves on. Is my bed close to the door or is it like further away or? It's uh, near the window, so not close to the door. Sorry, I'm just trying to finish the cookie that was in my mouth when you asked me. Sorry. Right. Um. I'll uh. <laughs> I'll hang out closer to the door, watching it. Okay. Uh, <coughs> perception check, please. Let's see. <clears throat> check. You hear whispering from down the hallway. Um, you actually, with an eighteen, you can make out what all three voices are, uh, or rather, all of the voices are. Uh, you hear uh, Oberyn speaking to Brightholm. Uh, they're uh, whispering about that they don't trust these travelers, and Brightholm says, uh. Uh, Candace mentioned something about the traveler from before. And he's like, the traveler from before? Yes, he... Something about this traveler being similarly suspicious and vanished the next day without a trace. 
didn't harm anybody, but they don't trust this string of events. There's a pause, and you hear Harkwell speak up and say, Not on this day, not on his day, shall we suffer the guilty to live. Uh, and you hear them begin to approach your uh, bedroom door. I will say you have about two rounds before they get there. Are uh, Davros and Jonas within arm's reach of each other? Uh, Yeah, sure. So I'll walk up between them, kind of shake both of them, trying not to make much noise. What? Uh, I mean, were you not expecting that? Like, <laughs> no, I. Well, they heard you. Uh, they, they hear wow. you make a noise. I'm I'll, rolling uh, like crazy this set. It's it's. Could insane. you share some of the twenties, please? No, they're all yeah. mine. Uh, I'll uh, uh, I'll motion toward the door to indicate that someone's coming. You hear a whisper. Uh, just you, because you're already uh, keeping an ear out for it. Uh, Verk. You hear them say, "I think they're awake." Uh, and you've just lost your second round uh, because now you hear them running and uh, Oberyn shoulder checks the door in. Initiative, please. There's an initiative function, too, in, um, in Roll20. Like I saw there was a thing where you can, like, track... There, there's a way where you can stack them on the side, and I'll have like each person's name with yeah. the order, and you can progress the order. Um, bring up Google again. Yeah, yeah. Google it. Uh, Sorry, you, guys. Uh, I, I, there was a bunch of stuff I wanted to do for this session that oh, like, got it's all good, man. thrown out because I was sick for two days. Initiative. Tracker, uh, roll twenty. Turn uh, tracker. Turn roll. tracker. To open the turn tracker, it's the clock on the left-hand side. Only the GM can open it. Once it is open, it's ah. visible to everybody. Oh, wait, why does it have numbers in there already? That's interesting. Because we rolled. Because once, once we rolled initiative, it's, oh, that's so cool. It throws it in there. Yeah, and then well, you can welcome. You can cycle the turn to like you when you roll oh, your initiative, and it highlights guys. who's who's what. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, yeah, but I don't I don't have stats loaded in for these guys, so I'm oh that's gonna, fine. Can I add in a manually? Oh oh oh. I think you can do like a roll initiative. Uh, here we go. Gonna, but I don't have their stats loaded in, and it's not going to know that it's. Well, at the bottom, can you see as and then that drop down? Do you have all your NPCs in there? Under I, that I list? don't. I, I don't. No, he was saying uh, he doesn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> can you manually can you change their it? turn? Yeah, I'm going to see if I can... Hold on. <sighs> Is she coming up as still a zero for you guys? Uh, no, it says a five for okay. us. Perfect. Okay. So that was Brightholm. You remember about the dice roller thing, right? Oh, no, I thank you. Yeah, I should be using that. It, just, it makes it easier than having to type every time. Yeah. 1d20. And how do you add numbers? Is it long? No. Advanced dice roller? Is that the add? Yeah, if you, just, if you just click on the dice of that left column, you'll have it... a pop-up dice roller. And then oh, under advanced roll. Last ten rolls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then twenty cheese. Uh Davros, what's your dex? Sixteen. Okay, you win. <clears throat> nope, nope. This nope. round. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, anyway. Uh, and Twelve. 
Wow. Uh, out of fuck. I want you to know every time I've screwed the party, it's been in character. Yeah. I also really love sure how this I've this fucking the screwing of the party today. Burke and Jonas, what's your dex? Uh, mine's pretty high. Hold on. Thirteen. Fourteen. Okay. So actually, Jonas should be before Burke. Obrin's before Burke. Uh, Harkwell is below Dabra. So this should be the final. Okay. What a, what a weird spread. 22, 22, 12, 12, 12. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, Dabros, you go first. Uh, you spring out of bed unarmed. Um, what has Rook said so far, and what have I heard? Uh, yeah, what did you say? But... I didn't say anything, because I was trying to be quiet until ah, yes. someone... Well, yeah. listen, um, man, all I did was I you woke me up from a full eight hours of rest. I'm remming like I should be. All right? You, like, you probably should have been more gentle about it, Mr. Like, 19 Strength. He's got you there. Hey. You asshole. I didn't hear you gently I shaking me. quietly. So it's not like <laughs> <laughs> and did shaking I hear, the crap out of him. <laughs> and did I hear him say any... Or did I hear the people outside... Did I hear the people outside the door? Uh, well, yeah, because they began to run over and kick the door. Yeah, he shoulder barged uh, no, the door in. you didn't hear them, like, talking. Okay, so is the door open already, or are they still yes, running at the door? Yes, it's, it's open. <clears throat> Actually, I will give you... Um, Harkwell's the one who kicks the door. No, Harkwell's the one who kicks the door in. I'll give you um, a, like, pre initiative surprise round um roll off what you you hear footsteps running towards the door is your instinct to go bar the door or something i said i was thinking but i don't think having just been woken up and seeing him uh seeing Burke point towards the door and hearing people running at it i don't think the first reaction would have been to block it okay so then it, it is kicked open by the time your turn starts But I will yell at the top of my lungs. What the hell is going on? <coughs> like, In response, you hear the hammer, the shock. As, as loud as I possibly can. So, like, literally trying to wake up everyone in the house. Sure. Uh, is that your whole turn? I mean, speaking's a free action, so I'll hold yeah. my turn. I'll, I'll hold after. Okay. Uh, Harkwell? Uh, Harkwell's me. <laughs> uh, he holds. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. So uh, he uh, see. I wish I wish I had been able. This is why I wish I had time to um, to make another map because now it's tough to. Let's let's see if we can't. Uh... Can we make like the room bedroom or something like above the chandelier? Yeah, I don't know how I small actually... of a space we're going to be dealing with. I was actually just that's fine. Let's do that. Let's say it's that room up there. Um, so let's get everybody, oops, okay. No, no one able thought of it. So where would the window be? Where would the, uh, We'll, we'll say that this door. is, Verk, this is the window, right, where you're, okay. you're not going to necessarily be there. And the door okay. will be like, oh my god, uh, let me put in a token. Wow, it doesn't even have a transparent... God damn, I... <laughs> mm. Sure. <clears throat> These look otherworldly, Dan. Yeah. I need I need a description. Yeah, hold on. Let me <laughs> fucking... God damn. Um, so, Bright Home, Harkwell is standing on the door. Wow! Mm -hmm. To front? To back. And it's behind... Yep. Like it. Then map to back. No, no, no. It's we're done. Harko <laughs> standing on the door tile. That's the door. Okay. That's that's fine. Brightholm is here. Uh Oberin is here. Um the beds were in the back, so like where this where um this vase is where actually I can I can do bed. Well uh, if Jonas and uh, Davros were in bed. You can just put them on their beds. I know. I have to. I have to make a. I have to put a bed. Down. Well, no, I mean, you just put them down. Oh.
big bed. <laughs> I am now sitting up at the foot of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Concerned at the okay. noise. Hold on. All right. God damn it, Dan. I copy and paste? Yes, I can. Yeah, all right. Ooh. You we know get, what? Um, we're getting fancy here, folks. In, in so, Verk, you, you were on the third bed, so you're now between the two of them to wake them up. Uh, and well, this is lagging like a motherfucker. Yeah. In, and, instead of uh, instead of holding after I yell, can I just? I'm I'm only going to use my movement. I'm just going to move to put the bed in between myself and Harkwell, and that, like kind of peek over. I'm not sure back. if you're allowed to hold half a turn. Um, but well, I'll... you can you can literally just use your movement, and that's it. Okay. So you, but that's you what I mean. Like that's all I'm doing is I'm just shouting. So you're you're passing after like, that. I, I still shouted like what the heck, and then I'm moving to to crouch down behind the bed in be putting Har putting the bed in between Harkwell and my. Okay, so you're like here. Yes, exactly. Okay, I think that's... what I think what Dan thought you meant by holding your turn was you can hold action to go at a later point in the round. Well, that's originally what I was going to do. Yeah. Uh, but I but changed that... my mind. I said, instead of doing that, I want to move instead yeah. of just sitting. Uh, yeah. So that's a great move because Harkwell kicks the door and immediately sh uh, You are now behind the bed. I will give you 50% concealment. Um, I don't know how concealment works in 5e. I'm going to just do it the way that I know how to do it, which is that I roll a, a D percent. Um, and uh, do, you want, uh, do you want low or do you want high? I was gonna say you could give him give disadvantage. Me, give me, give me. Uh, that's true. You could give him disadvantage. You, I think you. But there are two different want, kinds of cover. Also, I think you want concealment more than you want this. This guy to have disadvantage. Because, <laughs> because disadvantage is the equivalent of a minus five, statistically, and cover is like a fifty percent mischance. No. Um. Also, uh, Harkwell isn't disadvantaged at all. It is simply that Davros has put himself in an advantageous position. Anyway, we're going to do uh we're going to do cover. Um he's I'll going take, to shoot. I'll take the high. You want high? You want 51 yeah. to 100? Okay. Yep. Um Harkwell have here we go. <laughs> well, first of all, what is your AC? 14. Okay, so he does hit your AC. All right, so go ahead and roll me that percent. You want a 51 to 100. That will mean that he hits the bed instead. So the bed successfully covers. Ah, it. damn it. Ah, terrible. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. You are, wow, you are one square out of the ideal shotgun range. Um, his damage goes down to a D6. Wow! Wow, wow, wow. His face. I will take it. That goes right to wounds, though, right? It does. No, that no, that's not a nat one on a uh, d20 roll. Uh, um, uh, oh. That's not one on the damage roll. Okay, uh, I, I rolled a 14. <laughs> he but, he no, takes it to the face! <laughs> that's that, That's as good as it could have gone. So mm -hmm. uh, a, you hear you, a bunch of wooden shrapnel flies by your head as the shotgun blows the, the back, the headboard of the bed apart, and one pellet um, hits you in the side. So that's one to wounds. I... <laughs> Jonas, it's your turn. All right. <clears throat> what do I know? Go over a little bit of the God of Mourning again for me. Okay. He is sure. the he is the so God you, of you Righteousness. Know, you know a lot about the God of Mourning. Read an entire thing about him. Um. So he his name is full name is Mourning the Ascendant. He is the god of righteousness, the sun, and the heavens. Um, he is uh, rumored to be the firstborn of the gods, however that works. Um, he presides over trials and uh, justice. Um, oh no, not not justice necessarily. He's not the god of like. I'm sorry, that's a different god. Uh, that's that's father is the god of like trials and, and courts. He's the god of like paladins. He is a paladin. Um, things are very black and white for him. There's no middle ground with mourning. There's no gray areas. There's no um, ends justify the means with him. There is only righteousness and unrighteousness. Um, Try to think if there's anything. Do you have anything what, specific you want? Or what does what does he care about? How does he justify 
uh, unrighteousness. Like, you know, they are they are attempting now to kill us for some whatever reason they have they have come up with in their head. How uh -huh. does how does mourning handle people that are trying to act in in the name of righteousness but have failed to uh, to to judge properly? So they're punished very harshly, but you'd have to convince whoever is involved here that they are that they have judged improperly, right? Yeah. So your sure, position sure. is that they're not acting like mourning would actually want them to act. Um, that's a matter of, of debate. So th from their perspective, they are executing his his e explicit divine will. But no, he would not be kind about that. Like again, very black and white, right? So it's not okay if you do the the wrong thing, but you thought you were doing the right thing. That's as equally not okay as like just straight up doing the wrong thing. Does that make sense? Yes. So so if I was able violent. so if I was able to convince them, or if if somehow they came to the realization, let's say that they were doing the wrong thing here, then per the teachings and and uh, uh, per a religion based on mourning, they they should immediately stop. Sure, but you'd all right. I mean, yeah, that is true. They seem to have already thought about this and reached a conclusion. <laughs> that's, fine, that's fine. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Um, and there is also the chance that since gods are real and have divine power, you might be able to sway that divine power one way or the other, uh, in a very literal sense. Who, um, who, um, when you say you, you're talking. I mean, a anybody who believes in mourning or invokes his name, right? So, so this is the world where the gods are like govern literally everything, and this yeah. is his holy day. Yeah. So until sunrise, this is the day of mourning, uh, and do with that what you will. Like if you can think of however way you want. Oh, to. This, oh, so you, yeah. You you've played in my campaigns before, but these guys who haven't, my system is really um, open. Um, if you can justify something to me that makes sense in the world, that's a new truth of the world. So imagine as if, like, if I'm sketching out a, a scenario for you guys, anything I don't sketch out, you can suggest what, what goes there. Once it's there, like, it doesn't change for the next person. We're not, we're not playing, like, um, what's, what, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, we're not modding everything on everybody's turn. That's now how the world works, because we're all world building together because we're all writing this campaign together. Mm -hmm. So I don't have like a mechanic <coughs> for invoking the God of Mourning in this game. But if you can think of like a, a plan, by all means, and, and pitch it to me and we'll, we'll, we'll see if it's a good one. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. I, I'm encouraging creativity rather than knowing preemptively what the rules for this world are. Uh, Kurt, uh, Bill, does that, does that track? Yes, it yep. is. Okay. Cool. So anyway, uh, Jonas. Um, so. <clears throat> give me a second to think here. Um, sure. We're going to. What did. OK, so I saw a vision of morning earlier in bright home as he was trying to heal me right uh-huh and he and morning asked me does it hurt if i touch you there is that what it was does it hurt if yeah does, does this hurt as they like prodded your right so it it was literally the words of bright home the healer yeah. com coming out of a vision of morning right yes. so it wasn't words that morning would probably be speaking probably not okay <clears throat> so <clears throat> I think at this point, well, and, and let, let me also double check. Not really the God of Redemption, though, right? No. Nope. <laughs> All right. Righteousness, the sun, and the heavens. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. So I think uh, I fall off the bed f forward towards the noise. Uh-huh. And obviously, I've seen him. I've seen Harkwell now shoot his gun at my party member, uh -huh. at Davros, and I start to go into a of uh, a a fanatic style performance, 
and I start to chant not on his day not on his day the day of mourning <laughs> and I am very seriously because Jonas believes yeah. that knows that the gods exist believe that they you know and so far there there is the connection of the, the our original world and the way the gods are to yeah. the, the gods are very similar in this world, you know, similarly yeah. represented. We have no idea about the worms because there was nothing yeah. to discern. But uh, yeah. in this world, we have physical evidence that they believe in mourning. They have a, 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 a belief system. So I'm not I'm not preaching this to the men coming to murder us, the men that think they are justified in their actions in the name of mourning. I am literally preaching to the God morning who I just saw just hours ago in a vision and <clears throat> invoking him to come down and speak the truth to his passionate followers. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I like it. Um, roll me knowledge. Are you actually, before I say anything, are you doing is that's your action? You're not like doing that and then casting a spell. Um, like, saying, your performance, as it were. Let Let me see if something makes sense. But I, th I, I, I think that's it. Like that's that seems to me like that's the action. Yeah, it probably is. Um. <clears throat> uh, was, uh... No, I feel like if it requires a little bit more from me, I feel like I might have something it, else for you. But no, no, but, it doesn't. I'm, yeah, I'm just yeah. asking so I don't railroad you. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. So no, I I think that's it. I think I think that's my whole action. Um, you know, like like I'm I'm preparing for combat and getting in the right way. Get you know whatever phys from yeah. a physical standpoint. But I'm yeah. also taking taking a very meaningful moment to to reach out and touch the divine and ask for their help with whatever the hell's going on. Okay. Um. Roll me perform, and roll it with advantage from you having literally read the pr like you you've actually took time went out of your way to study the prayer of morning written beneath his portrait uh so that's giving you advantage on this role okay so i would just hit bonus two or uh I don't, how do i do no, it with guys, how does that advantage is your no, role it... twice well oh, it's you uh it if you go into your options you know you can click the cogwheel oh you can prompt it oh yeah, that's what I meant. So yeah. I knew what it did. I didn't know how to execute it. How do I turn prompting on for all of them? Uh, the top oh, there we right. go. Yeah. All right. Uh, so performance. I'm going to give you a DC of. I got I to gotta, I gotta think because I know the numbers are squished in 5e. Give me a second. Uh, well, just let me critically fail first and then. Ho ho hold on. I have. Um... <laughs> Average uh, DC in. I know I want it to be hard, but I want to know what average is supposed to be. At da, 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 da. oh, okay, that's pretty much what I was gonna do. Okay. Um, so DC seventeen. Jesus Christ. Okay. Hey, uh, advantage gives you a good good shot. I hit. Yeah, that. maybe. <laughs> um, so give me one second, guys. I'm sorry. Sure. He is trying to invoke a god, so. But in in a world completely devoted to gods, and on this god's holy day. Yep. 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 All right. So I'm rolling with it. Wait. Where did it prompt? Oh God! It prompted on the thing. Roll type. Uh, advantage. All right. Yes. Boom. Nice. Yes. Uh, no. This is a this is a rule where if you your other rolls in that one, you have to take. Uh, yes. Okay. Is, cool. Great. 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 This is world of fucks. Uh, that's, <laughs> it's it's not. Then when do we get um, to uh, uh, the world of no fucks given? <laughs> oh no, that's not for a while. <laughs> uh, so oh, congratulations. Uh, yeah. So you you hear uh, the voice of morning speaking truly to you. Um, it is in a language you don't understand, and you Wonderful. are pretty sure cannot understand. It is booming, and it almost knocks you down to your knees. Uh, the rest of you hear a rumbling sound, but aren't sure where it's coming from. Uh, did you watch Annihilation, uh, Frats? I did not, no. This channel? Okay. Um, it's, 
it's this beautiful musical note, but with all of the settings on the equalizer cranked to a level where it's almost painful. Like it's almost atonal and distorted, uh, not because it is imperfect, but because your ears are imperfect. And it strikes them, your ears begin to bleed, and you are full for a brief moment with the blessing of uh, mourning. He has judged not you to be righteous, but you, your sincere uh, um, uh, appeal to his power on this day is something that these guys did not bother to do. And they are genuinely attempting to. Uh, I see your fucking stupid face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are they are trying to murder innocent, not innocents, but murder guests in their home while they were sleeping, which is decidedly unrighteous. Whatever you have done, so you're on the right side of this at least for now. Um, <clears throat> did you have a specific effect you wanted? Because if you don't, I do. I'm just checking to see if you want to do something. Uh, I mean, like, I I don't know what what's in the realm of possibilities for me to like. Are you saying he's basically? I mean, I understand my character is not understanding what what he's blessing me with, but you're saying like if I had if I had an, a desired outcome, I'm trying to invoke it or. Yeah, what what is your desire? To, is it power for yourself? Is it a blessing for your party? Is it justice on those who are trying to hurt you? I mean, I, I, hell, let, let's go ahead and phrase it in, in a really simple uh, way. Do you want a personal buff? Do you want a party buff? Or do you want uh, to hurt your enemies? Let's let's break it down like that. I, well, so I I feel like, and and bear with me because I know I'm asking maybe for two things here or or. Uh, a, a double advantage, if you will. I, I feel like, although those are the options you've laid out in, in the D&D &D terms, um, I, I feel like the appropriate thing to do would to not want harm to come to my hosts, right? Like, like even though they're trying to kill me and they're breaking whatever law of, of nature and, and, you know, the, the world of gods, um, I feel like we're still in there. Like murdering them in their own home would also be a huge, probably issue, right? So like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna answer that, but sure, that's. I that's feel, a, I feel, it, is there, is there a way to, you know, sort of get, like, <clears throat> ask for a. Uh, Kurt, Kurt is uh, typing. I don't know if he's telling me for the for the party <laughs> buffer. Because you're taking ten but... minutes to ask for this thing. What what <laughs> what do you what do you want? In incapacitation works. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's, but but what what I'm, that's not what I asked you. I asked no. you, did you want a a, th a bad thing to happen to them? I don't. A good thing for you, or a good thing for your whole party? Uh, unfortunately, I'm Jonas, and I'm going to ask for a good thing for me because I'm not okay. going to ask for a bad thing for them. Okay. <clears throat> okay, fine. So you are blessed with the power of morning. You have three charges of the power of the sun. Um, you can well. So this uh, you can. Uh, you have advantage uh, through, through three charges. You can use them on anybody. You can use them on enemies if you want. Um, every time you use this charge on something, that person gets advantage on their um, a roll of their choice. Uh, you can use this um, as an immediate action. Um, and uh, if it's a damaging attack, they get an extra uh, DH to it. Um, if uh, they are... Um... Oh, sorry. They get a D8 of inspiration dice. Um, do you know what inspiration dice does in uh, 5e? Did you just ask, do we know what it does? Uh, I asked you if you know what it does. I don't know. Because you're the bar. Okay. Uh, inspiration is, is, is a, a die you give to somebody, and they can add it to their... I'm letting you guys add it to any roll of your choice. Um, so they get a uh, advantage on that roll, and they get an extra D8. They can add that D8 to their D20, um, or they can add that D8 to uh, a damage roll. So they can roll to damage, and then roll another D8 on top of that to damage. Or to do whatever. If they want to do an escape artist, it's an extra D8 to that, in addition to having advantage. So you have three charges. You can give that out as you see fit as an immediate action. Cool? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is now uh, Oberyn's turn. <laughs> he hears this invocation and pauses for a hot second. Um, he is going to roll. He succeeds. He is not 
um, afraid. Um, he still charges forward, and uh, he goes to strike. He goes to put himself in a pretty disadvantageous position. He's between uh, Verk and Jonas. Uh, he goes over to attack you, Jonas. I'm going to roll to swing. And a miss. Uh, that's his turn. Uh, Verk, it's your turn. All right. I am going to <coughs> sidestep over to here. Uh -huh. What do Davros and Verk know about my my blessing? Uh, they know that you – nothing. I mean, they, you seem blessed. You are glowing. You're, like, completely <laughs> okay. eliminated. And – uh, you maybe don't know you're doing this, Jonas, but you are now currently at all times chanting a prayer to morning. Like it's just—it's like you're like speaking in tongues, basically. Nice. Also, um, this is the first time I'm pretty sure either of you guys have seen Jonas sincerely do anything, not being like <laughs> a, a ponce or like a snarky idiot. I—I I don't know. Some of that snark is sincere. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm going to grab Harkwell. That's his uh -huh. name, right? Yep. Yeah. And, uh, see if I can't take him down into a grapple. Uh-huh. And would it be possible to grapple him and remove the shock? Uh, that's a disarm. Um, and sure, but I don't know how disarming works in 5e. I am currently looking it up. Wow, there is, okay, there is no rule for disarm? That can't, that can't be right. Is it Sunder? Um, Hold on. Disarming attack. Uh, it it's a you? fighter. Oh, What? I mean, I could look that up. No, no, no. That's and... that's some stupid shit. This should be a base action available to everybody. Um, Just do, like, an opposed strength give... check to... Well, first, go ahead and roll me a grapple. All right. Um... I'm assuming it's just going to be a strength check. Just add my strength to the d20. Uh, to a grapple check? Yeah. Uh, use the attack action making a grapple. Um, I think you straight up just make an attack. Uh, wait, hold on. In front of me, you making a grapple check. So attack rolls. Strength athletics. So do you have athletics? I do. Yeah, you're going to roll athletics. Oh, okay. And I'm going to roll athletics or acrobatics. This is Harkwell. Pretty so good. he's not great at either, but I'm going to roll... Wow, I'm sorry, man. I, jeez. <laughs> I, How many twenties is that for you tonight? I, it's like four or five. It's it's been a ton. Uh, years of uh, years of dice rolling experience. Uh, I'm not superstitious. Like I don't believe in like luck as a as a person, but I definitely believe in like the heart of the dice. Like that's that's a hundred percent a real thing. Um, yeah. Sorry, you don't grapple him. Um, so uh, what I'm gonna say as a house rule, um, for five e, if you grapple somebody, uh. You may so if you want to disarm somebody normally, um, you have to make an attack roll uh, against their weapon, basically oppose attack rolls, and I'll probably do opposed strength checks to see who who gets to keep a hold of it. Um, for a grappler, um, you uh, if you successfully grapple, you may use your bonus bonus action to do an opposed strength check, but you get advantage because you're grappling, so it's much easier to do. So it's a great idea. You just happen to roll poorly. However, I contend that you rolled very well. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think I rolled poorly. That's true. <laughs> uh, however, you do have fate. Oh, that's right. Right. So if if you took a 20 on this, mm -hmm. plus, I'm assuming that would make your total higher than 21, because your athletics has to be... It's a plus 5. Yeah, so you would have a total of 25. So that's what that's there for. Um, okay. You can't critically succeed, I... but in terms of opposed attack rolls, that doesn't mean anything. You're not like... I didn't know if him having the nat 20 just meant that he yeah. got his way. 
Nope. Um. Okay. Then yes, I will use a fate. Okay. Uh, you use it, and in real life, you use poker chips. It's much more dramatic. You get to toss a poker yeah. chip on the table. It's great. Um. So you use a fate. You that you are down to one fate. Um. You have one. Davros has one, and you have a two still, Jonas. Right? You haven't used any. Yeah. No, I haven't used any. Okay. Um. <clears throat> uh. You succeed. You have grappled. You may now roll an attack action. Um. Opposed. Uh. We're gonna say oppose straight up attack adding your strength um but you have advantage uh you have to be to 12 <laughs> so i'm just doing it like a strength check at that point right yes. 20 with the strength mm -hmm. with advantage oh oh well don't, don't need the advantage um <laughs> you you are unarmed you now are holding the gun <laughs> <laughs> you can't let me be very clear you can't fire it in a, a i don't know if you know how to fire it but b you can't fire it while grappling it's a shot yeah yeah uh I and was b, more... only only one barrel is now loaded because you already fired one of the barrels i was more concerned with grabbing it and like sure, sure. chucking it across the room just so sure. he didn't have it you are out of actions though but you do now have the, the gun. yeah all right great uh brightholm's turn Right home is behind Harquay, uh, who is now occupying like the same square as you, I'll say. But you guys yep. can move. Um oh my god, this fucking god damn it. She hears this prayer to uh to morning. Um <clears throat> I am also gonna roll a save. She makes it. She is unperturbed. This does not bother her that you've seemingly legitimately invoked the power of mourning. Um, and uh, she fires off. Uh, she pulls out a, a short sword. She whispers into the blade, and it begins to glow. And she fires off a blast uh, at you, uh, mm, Jonas or Verk. <sighs> Verk, you're grappling with Harkwell, which makes it a 50-50. Jonas... Or Davros. He's a glowing angel. He is a glowing angel. She's going to go for you, Davros, because you are the one that lied to her in the first place. Oh. And Count Kyle. Kind of so, let's see. Can I... Do you guys know in 5e if you provoke? for what... If you're grappling, you probably can't make an AOO, I would imagine. I don't think you can do <laughs> attacks of opportunity when you're grappling. I, I don't think so. No, you, so, you can't, no. Yeah, so she's going to go 5... 10, 15, 20. Hello? Um, and she reaches out to attack you. She has advantage for this attack. How do I... Oh, shoot. How do... Is there a way to roll advantage without, like, off of your character sheet? Uh, just roll 2. The higher. Oh, oh, 2d20. No, no. Yeah. Not 2d20, because that'll do... That'll add it together, right? No, just roll another die. Just oh, just, he's saying just roll twice, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, like a like a savage. Uh, your AC is 14, if I recall, right? Yep. Fantastic. 15 hits. Uh, wow. Uh, seven damage to Vigor. Which is the first time I think your vigor has been hit. It's been all wounds so far. Perfect. And I need you to roll me a uh, charisma save. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> uh, you are blinded by this strength as the as the blade just misses you. So vigor again, vigor a vigor hit doesn't mean you've gotten like stabbed. It means like you lost some stamina because you had to like it it nicked you or you had to roll out of the way to dodge it or something like that. Uh, it's, it's your stamina bar. Um, in so doing, it flashes in front of your eyes and blinds you. Um, you now have a 50% mischance for everything you do and just generally, you know, can't see. Uh, so that's terrible. Uh, and it's top of the round. It's your turn. As this happens, Davros, you feel uh, the uh, uh, compass begin to uh, uh, warm up and it says uh, loss of blood or not loss of blood. Um, 
we'll say wounds detected, are you in danger? Yes. Would you like to leave? Yes. Confirmed. Now plotting uh, navigation coordinates. Please hold. You may continue with your turn. Um, <clears throat> I am going to... I am going to attempt to grapple right All right, uh, post strength. Or what? sorry, opposed athletics. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> He's got like a six strength, doesn't he? <laughs> that was, I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, well, and hold on. So go ahead and roll me a D percent. Uh, oh, that's right. Sorry. You want 51 to 100. All right, uh, let me roll mine. She has a zero in both of those. Uh, but she's going to roll dexterity, so that gives her a one. Uh, you got it. She's grappled. It's more of a bear hug, really. Uh -huh. <laughs> just, to sure. her from, just to try to prevent her from using the, the, the weapon okay. or like any motions or spells, anything along those lines. Just sure. to kind of be... That's it. Uh, oh, what, what, why did uh, Bill say quit metagaming? I didn't miss that. Was that from a while ago? I, I was looking up the God of Mourning on a different tab, oh. and it showed up oh, on the stream. Just, I was giving him shit because he was yeah. going on Google and typing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I literally didn't find anything that made sense anyway, so. Wait, in like like the, the general internet? Yeah, because it's your God system, not... not yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, uh, um, uh, okay, is that your turn? It is my turn, yes. Okay. Uh, Harkwell. Harkwell is grappled. Um, escaping a grapple, strength athletic? It's a, right. yep, a strength opposed. Uh, do you get a bonus to this? Um, I don't have a pin, so it, we're just, yeah, grappling each other. Sure. Oh, wow. I am. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Nat 20, total of 22. Uh, I'm serious. I, I promise you guys I did not install a DM mod on, like, World 20. <laughs> this is not, like, if that even exists. Um, he breaks free of your grapple um, and goes to use his bonus action to... Uh, well, no, that's only if he is grappled. Um, he... Stares at his gun, but can't do much. Um, he takes a five-foot step. That puts him back here. Um, is that a move action? It's a bonus action. It's called disengage. If that's what escaping is? Yeah, the wiki is not super clear. So I do have my actual attack action. Correct. Um, do I want to grab my gun back? What? So what all... Actually, disengage is oh, technically it... moving out. Uh, moving five feet away f from the person, so like one more space back. I thought the uh, the grappling would have been the attack action, and then disengaging would be like the bonus. Well, he he wasn't trying to grapple you; he was trying to get out. Well, yeah. Uh, so he yeah he's not trying to. It doesn't say it says a grappled creature can use its action. Yeah, I'm reading, which is not helpful because that doesn't. So I thought everyone had one action and one bonus action. Well, one That's move, correct. one action, one bonus action. Oh, is that? Oh, uh, it's not called standard. So that that is right. Yeah. If it says action, that means standard action. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. So then, in that case, yes, he uses his standard. I'm sorry. I'm not used to that terminology. He uses his standard action to break out of the grapple, um, and he is a tough. You got right home grappled. You have his gun. Jonas is glowing and chanting a prayer. Um, he yells for help. 
Um, and uh, there was already a commotion from Davros having yelled to wake everybody up. And now you hear footsteps coming down the hall. Uh, that is his turn. Jonas, it's your turn. I'm helping Denise with something. Hold on a second. Okay. So, while we're uh, waiting, uh -huh. quick question. Yeah. Would you consider a shotgun, when wielded as a bludgeoning weapon, a club uh -huh. or a great club? I don't know uh, what the size a, difference a, would be. A club. Okay. I feel like it's not about size as much as it's about weight. And this gotcha. is probably the you know the weight of a, a solid club, but definitely not a great club to me is like a fucking like like huge thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No, that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Where? Okay. Oh, there, there. I should have a second. <clears throat> um. Yeah, and we and we have like we're about to end anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got you. In fact, um, this will be the last thing that happens this session. Okay. Perhaps so what was, what was the what was that last part that you were describing about the the me glowing and stuff? I think that's all I said was that you're glowing, and ch oh, and you're speaking like in tongues. You're chanting the words of morning, the word of the the prayer of morning. Like, okay. And I don't know. I, I guess I I oh 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 no. You described what was going on. There there was more sounds coming from down the hallway. Yes, people are coming. Okay. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> kind of hoping you guys would try to murder these people. For a bunch of criminals, you know, I feel like you were I'm, hoping I'm we would try to murder them. Criminal. We we could we could, we've been trying, Dan. You've been out rolling. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we can't all roll twenties on every no, other. You, you specifically roll. said you don't want to harm them. I don't know. I I am a nonviolent criminal. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, that's what you should have said. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, and, and it wouldn't have been a lie. This is very true. Oh you only man! Have one that did a violent act. <clears throat> um. No, no, both. No. Uh, uh, would you? Would you consider Jonas? Yeah, I was gonna say that I was the one that had a violent act. Uh, I thought he, Jonas would be considered more of a. He convinced seventy-three people to kill themselves. <laughs> he he was convicted for seventy-three counts of murder. Well, well I, I wouldn't say it's violent though. Uh, <laughs> this is the kind of hair splitting morning does not ab <laughs> by, the, by the way <laughs> so <clears throat> I think uh, oh man um, I, no pressure I, but this I, is what we're ending the session with I don't know I think <sighs> I have a feeling that the people coming down the hall are not going to be happy with any of this. With uh, specifically the three of them coming into our room. That's fair. That's I. Uh, I don't think I like. I, th this is this is Jonas's hope. I guess. Well, uh, well, going off of what's objectively occurred, Candace and Jonathan have both said out loud that it's true that you you are regardless of maybe some of the specifics here. What the the because again, there's no gray areas. It's hard and fast. You don't harm guests in your own home. Right, 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 right. That's a hard and, so, and, and so that's they said that, it out loud. And so that's what I'm channeling. Um. So, <clears throat> I, I, I feel like I want to. I feel like I want to explode with sunlight and then move to the doorway, but I don't know if that's like with. Well, I I I don't want to I don't want to like meta game too hard or not meta game, but like I don't want to because I, I did ask you what you wanted and I, we we specifically said it was you give someone the power to like uh have the power of of morning's blessing, which is advantage and then an extra D of inspiration. No, so the... exploding into sunlight would be a weird like, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you have a spell well, that makes light, well, so, well, and so you hold want to on. use that. So hold on. Well, yes, okay, I can do that. However, I also want to make sure I asked for the blessing for it to be on me, not the party blessing. So I just want to make make sure 
this yeah. is the version of the of the personal buff, right? Yeah, you and you can okay. spend that buff on yourself every time if you Perfect. Want. No, no, no. I I got it. But I yeah. just I wanted to make sure. So Yeah. Um uh then 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 Ooh. <clears throat> How how crazy could I get expending all three charges and making well, it? Well, I did say an immediate action, which I don't even know exists in this game. But I would <laughs> I, I would I would let you free action. Is it called? It's called free. It's like, like talking is a free action. Yeah, so you can but do it whenever. Free, free and immediate are two different things, though. Immediate is a thing you do on your opponent's turn. Normally, That's true. I don't know. Free yeah. action doesn't spend any free of your action. energy. Yeah, and they spend any of your turn. Is something you can do on your e turn. E either way, it, but it doesn't. Get that I already said it was an immediate action, which is the quickest kind of action, um, because you can do it any time. So if you spend all three of your normal actions, move, normal, and bonus, I will let you use all three charges at the same time. Sure, as long as you do nothing else but use them. So. I want well. Let me. T I'll tell you what I want to do. Maybe it requires using a fade as well, if that's fair, right? So fade, fade just maximizes a roll. Okay. All right. So, um, what I what I think would make sense to me would be using charges to buff fairy fire. Well, but that's my but that's my action, right? Well, no, no, no. So I, and then I could expend a second one to to get another action. Basically, what? No, what? So I'm, I'm, the I can only I can only cast one spell during my turn, right? Right. So you okay. can use your bonus and move action to buff yourself twice, and then use your standard action to cast a spell. I'm so confused at this point. I don't know what's buff, no. say, buff say, yourself twice and cast your spell. So, so you have three charges. It takes any any action can be used to to do this. They 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 cost the lowest amount of time, right? So any action, move, standard, bonus, any action can cast this buff. But a spell, according to the rules, can only be cast on your standard action. And the, so, these buffs have nothing to do with standard action, right? What do you mean? Nothing? You you can use them on a standard action. You can use them to do to buff whatever action you want. Right. As I, a, I, I, I can't gain an action here. That's what I'm asking. No. Okay. No. That, that's we yeah. don't have. Yeah. No. That that's fine. So you're thinking of old Arthur. That's fine. Yeah. 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 So. Oh. And I could stack the buffs to make something pretty powerful. Yeah, you're gonna add. Not only is the thing going to have advantage, it's going to have two d8s on. If there's a roll involved, it'll have two extra d8s of, of roll. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hmm. <laughs> do, do you want to take the week to think about this one? No, no, no. I'll, I'll okay. cast. I'll cast. I don't. I don't know that you'll need me to uh, uh, even use a buff here, or maybe I'll use one charge. But I want to cast fairy fire in. Uh, you know, while I'm still chanting, while I'm still invoking, you know, mourning, uh, in his likeness, I want to conjure a rough outline of mourning out of fairy fire and push him through the doorway into the hallway. And if I, I I'm not sure what the with the description of fairy fire, if it allows me to kind of control it, but I'd like to make the image like like kind of point the way of what's going on to the people running through the uh the hallway. Um <clears throat> that's fair. The 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 thing I said was it imbues your uh your target with the power of mourning was my exact words and then it does a bunch of dice effects but that descriptor alone makes sense. If fairy fire is imbued with the power of mourning, quote unquote, um to have his image is fair and it okay. just stands there outside the door gleaming and glowing and looking well, right. So he can't talk, but you know the fairy fire is not right. going to produce sound. Yeah. But it's going right. to it's going to evoke uh, it. You know, this way, you know, is is you know what's going on, and and I'm also trying to and not that this this has nothing to do with you know making people do saves or throws or whatever, um, but uh, <clears throat> the uh, I I want the uh, uh, the the I, I want them to see that I'm I'm able to evoke. 
uh, you know, morning that it's not just a show I'm putting on or they cast a saving throw and they kind of shrugged off the 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 speaking in tongues and everything. And I kind of yeah. want to re-evoke that. Uh, OK, yeah, sure. Um, real quick, everybody roll me a dexterity saving throw. Everybody? Yep. OK. Wow, I can't stop rolling that. Oh, whoops, normal. Cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, Davros, you didn't have, but that's fine. <coughs> oh. It's not a big deal. You were out of the range. I didn't realize. Um, uh, and, wow, that doesn't matter at all. Okay, so uh, this was to... Oh, I get another one. Wow, okay. So everybody succeeds the deck save, which is basically so that they're not Im negatively impacted by fire fire. If you fail the deck save, um, you are surrounded with lights and people have advantage to hit you. That affects no one but Jonas, who it was already affecting because he's glowing and easy to hit. So <laughs> that doesn't, no negative impact. There is simply now the image of morning outside the door. Okay, we're already eight minutes over. Let's end there. Yeah, uh, for we'll sure. Pick it yeah. back up next week uh, and we'll see how this, uh, this debacle uh, turns out. Uh, cool. All right, guys. Uh, good game. I will awesome. uh, apologize retroactively if I wasn't making any sense at any point because no, 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 no. Only I half here. Thank you. Yeah, I will. I wasn't paying attention. So yeah, no, we're good. good hey, good. that's fair. Um, we're gonna change the the date or whatever to accommodate your work stuff, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, going forward, I was actually supposed to have a meeting tomorrow, and they they are like it's the. Were you actually in this one, Rats? The the pop health. Uh, at, at some point I was, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's hey, every Friday. Thanks for the, yeah. uh, Walud or, uh, or Walude. Thanks, yeah, uh, like thanks for the, uh, thanks for the follow, like man. I appreciate it. Tuesday? Okay. Is everyone cool with Tuesday? Um. Who, who was um, the guy who couldn't do Monday and Tuesday? Was that the other guy? Kurt, Kurt has the play stuff, so it's kind of up to him, I think. I on mostly Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, or at least the past two weeks it's been... Late on Tuesday. No, I, I I wasn't Scargo. We're um, good. But Mon if Monday works, Monday's cool. bad for me. I guess Friday I could do. Is, it, is anybody cool with Friday? Um, Friday makes makes mm, almost more sense for me. But if we could do it a little bit later, maybe. Uh, Kurt, Kurt, what what works for you, man? It just give us the list of stuff that's okay. I mean the best the best days of stuff I know I could do is Monday, Thursday, and Sunday, and like later on a Saturday. Uh, we don't have to do it right now. We'll we'll we'll, we'll yeah, reconvene we'll, and chat. We'll work this out later. Yeah, but we'll I just wanted to later. remind everybody that we need to talk about it. Yeah, and, and if I'm... worse comes to worse, I can just still do Thursdays. So it's just I gotta I gotta get it. I wouldn't I don't prefer it, but. Yeah, word. Is. All right. Uh, I'll catch you guys later. Cool. Thanks, man. Night. Have a good night. All right. Later. All right. Let me uh let me address the stream real quick, and then I'll uh hop back in with you guys. Yep. So uh thanks guys. Appreciate you tuning in and stuff. This is our uh our five E mini D and D campaign. Uh and uh it's uh it's pretty interesting. Uh Dan didn't have a map for this uh this room over here, um so we kind of made a makeshift uh, bedroom over here to 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 uh you know, role play out the action and stuff, but, um, uh, it's pretty interesting so far. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, Walud or Walude, thanks for the follow. Uh, you know, you're the, you're the first person to come by and give us a new follow. So definitely appreciate it. Um, if you, uh, uh, you know, want to, uh, talk to us in, in discord or hit us up on Twitter or anything like that, all the information's on Twitch there. Um, I appreciate, uh, you know, uh, if, if you're not familiar with D&D, &D, if you haven't played this before, if you know, it, we're, we're here to answer questions and talk about it and have fun. Um, and we're just trying to, uh, you know, get some content on video so that we can maybe piece together and, and cut together like a, a little short uh, uh, actual, you know, uh, you know, hour, two hour, three hour thing. So we're, we're doing three hour sessions. We're trying to do it weekly. It sounds like we're going to have to change the day. We've been doing Thursdays. Uh, this is the second week now, but we're probably going to change the day. Um, so... <clears throat> Uh, keep an eye for some information. I'll probably post on Twitter about it. I'll probably throw it up in the Discord about it um, if you're interested at all. Um, and uh, and then if you get the notification, if, if you're following us, all right? So uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and uh, I hope uh, to see you the next time we go live, all right? All right, guys. Have a good night.